All praises. Let's go. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 1. Read. There is a reproof that is not coming. There is a correction that is not nice. Some correction, you are going to be put on blast. Some correction is not nice. When we correct you, you're going to get mad and hate the leadership man and say, mm, yo, they don't love us. No, we love you. That's why we correct you. Go ahead. Okay. Some men hold at his tongue. Some his... men, some men do what? Some men hold at his tongue. Come on. And he is wise. So when you get corrected, the Lord says, hold your tongue. When you get corrected, don't be talking back. When you get corrected, you listen to what the correction is about so you can fix it. Ne? Go ahead. It is much better to reprove. It is better to be corrected, read. Than to be angry secret. Than to be angry secret. So if I don't correct you, that means the Lord says, I'm going to be angry with you secretly. Meaning, I'm going to have anger towards you. I'm going to hate your guts secretly. And when I see you, I say, Shalom. You see that? So the Lord says, correct right then and there. Check the brother. Check the sister. You understand? And mama, you not. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 2. Go ahead. It is much better to reprove. It is better to correct. Than to be angry secretly. Than to be angry secretly. Yeah, no, you sisters who are listening to me there. Yeah. Me, I'll correct you. So that I don't, I'm not angry with you secretly. But it's out of love. So when you get corrected, don't take it personal. Don't say we hate you. We love you. That's why we correct you. Do you understand that? Brothers too. When you get corrected, don't get mad. Get led. Repent. Get it together. You understand? Go ahead. And he that confesses his that confesses his fault. If you confess your faults, come on. Shall be preserved from hurt. You're going to be preserved from the hurt that will come from the Lord. Because when you confess your faults to the Lord, the Lord will forgive you. But you must change your ways. Read. How good, it is, how good is it when thou art reproved? When you, when you, it says, how good is it when you are what? When thou art reproved. When you are corrected, it says, it is good that when you are corrected, you do what? To show repentance. To show repentance, meaning what? You change. The Lord says when you get corrected, don't get mad, don't get an attitude. You understand? Don't be changing your face, looking mad, looking ugly. Okay, go ahead. For so thou shalt, shalt thou escape willful sin. You're going to escape willful sin because if you get mad when you can get corrected, obviously you're not going to change. Therefore, you will not escape willful sin. Meaning because willful sin is you sin knowing that this thing is wrong. You do it anyway. You don't want to escape that, the Lord is saying. Meaning there is no more sacrifice for sins. You understand? Go ahead. As is the last of an, as is the last of an eunuch to devour a virgin. So the last of a eunuch is to devour a virgin. You understand? Because a eunuch is a man who, who don't deal with women. You understand? But his last is to deal, to what? To deal with a virgin who has not been, a woman who has not been touched or defiled. Come on. So is he. That executed judgment with violence. You see that? So it's the same one that executed judgment with violence. So when you execute judgment with violence means you are angry secretly. You snap. Okay, come on. There is one that keepeth silence. There's one that keeps silence. And is found wise. And is found what? And is found wise. That's why it's, it's important not to run your black mouth. Always just be running your mouth. The law says some a lot of the times you want give me James 122. Now that we're on this, James 1, 22, watch this. James, chapter 1, verse 22, watch this. Listen to what the most High God is saying. This is the apostle James. Here's what he said. Read it. James 1, 22, come on. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. Read. But be doers of the Lord of the word. But be doers of the word, come on. And not hearers only. And not hearers only. Don't be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Apply what is written. Read. Deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. Because when you hear but you don't apply, you deceive yourself. Okay, come on. For if any be a hearer of the word. Because if you are a hearer of the word, you just hear but you don't apply. Is one ear out the other. Because if he says you are a hearer but not a doer, it goes one ear out the other. That means you're not going to apply. 
Therefore, you are not going to escape willful sin. That's what he's saying. Read. For if any be a hearer of the word, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, and not a doer, meaning you don't apply what the Bible says. Come on. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. The natural face is your sinful face. Your sinful self. The glass is the Bible. Because you, you look at the Bible with your natural face with, because what? With your sins. When you read the Bible, the Bible reveals the sins you're in. Okay, come on. For he beholdeth himself. You look at yourself through the Bible, you see the wrongs you're in, the laws you're breaking, the sins you're in. The sins you offend in the most high. Come on. And go at his way. And you go your way. Meaning you leave. Come on. And straightway forget that what manner of men you are. You see that you forget what you've learned. Which you're supposed to apply it. That's what the Lord is saying through the Apostle James. Come on. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. But if you look into the perfect law of liberty. Meaning under Christ. Come on. And continue it therein. And you continue in that perfect law of liberty. Which gives you what? Which gives you salvation, which gives you life. Read. He being not a forgetful hearer. You see that God says, don't be a forgetful hearer. You behold, you behold your natural face in a glass and you forget. Meaning what? You, you see yourself through the Bible, hold that Romans 7 verse 7. You see yourself through the Bible, in the Bible, you see the sins you're in. But when you, it's time for you to, when you close the Bible for you to apply, you don't apply the Lord is saying. You are a forgetful hearer. Because the Bible reveals the sins we in. And the Bible gives the ways to overcome. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Read. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? The laws of God is not a sin. It's not a sin to apply the laws of God. Come on. God forbid. Meaning no. The laws is not sin. Read. Nay. I have not known sin. I have not known sin. Come on. But by the law. But by the law. The only way you can know what sins you in. You must be taught the laws of God. The laws of God will reveal your sins unto you. Okay? Go back to where he was at. We need to understand. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Okay? The book of James, chapter 1, verse 24. Go ahead. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see that? The law says you behold yourself. You, look your, you see yourself in the Bible, your sinful self through the Bible, because why? The laws of God will reveal your sins. Come on. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty, God's commandments. Read. And continue therein. And you continue therein. So not only must you look into the perfect law of liberty, but you must continue in the perfect law of liberty. Read. He being not a forgetful hearer. You being not a forgetful hearer because you continued in the perfect law of liberty. Come on. But a doer of the word. But a doer of the word. You must do the word. Come on. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. You're going to be blessed in your doings. Because you apply. Okay, come on. And bridle not his tongue. And you don't bridle your tongue. Meaning what? You don't keep your spirit in check through your tongue. Go ahead. But deceive at his own heart. But you deceive your own mind because you cannot brightly your own tongue. Come on. This man's religion. This is man's vain. religion is what? This man's religion is in vain. Is vain. This man's religion is vain, meaning it's false. You understand? That religion is Christianity, politics, feminism. You understand? That's a false religion. Come on. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Okay, pure religion, and that is a default before the Father is this. Come on. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. You see that? To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. How do we visit them? We go and teach them the laws of God. We go to the streets to bring them into this truth. Read. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. You see that? To keep himself unspotted from the world. How does he do it? Give me James 1. The same chapter. Same, same chapter, give me James 1 verse 12. This is how you keep yourself unspotted from the world. Read. The book of James chapter 1 verse 12. Come on. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. That's how you keep yourself unspotted from the world. You endure temptation, the Lord is saying. Because temptations will come your way. When you say you want to serve the Lord, you're going to be tempted. Your soul is going to be tempted. The Lord says prepare yourself for temptation. Go ahead. 
For when he is tried, when you are tried, because you are going to be tried, come on, he shall receive the crown of life. You're gonna receive the crown of life, eternal life. Come on, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. You see that the Lord has promised eternal life to them that love him. How do we love God? Is it how you feel in your heart? You feel mushy inside? No, no, no. This is how you love the Lord. Get that in First John. This is what it means to love the Lord, the love of the Father. Okay, come on, First John five and three. Watch this. The first book of John, chapter 5, verse 3. Come on. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. We obey. We apply his commandments. Read. Really? And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not difficult. They are not grievous. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. Read on. For whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is what? Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. What does it mean to be born of God? It means to be born again. Give me that in James, 1 Peter 1, 23. This is what it means to be born of God. To be born of God means to be born again. Okay? 1 Peter 1, 23. The first book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. Come on. Being born again. Being born again. Come on. Not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. Because Christianity is a corruptible seed. Politics is a corruptible seed. Feminism is a corruptible seed. Democracy is a corruptible seed. You understand? Go ahead. But of incorruptible. But of incorruptible. Come on. By the word of God. Because the word of God is incorruptible. So we are born again or born of God by the word of God which is incorruptible. Is that it on there? No, sir. Go ahead. Which liveth and abideth forever. The laws of God liveth and abideth forever. Go back to where was that now. First John 5 and 4. The first book of John, chapter 5, verse 4. Read. For whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born again. Come on. For whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Come on. Overcometh the world. You're going to overcome the world. What does it mean to overcome the world? You will overcome the sins of this world. First John 2, 16. Whatsoever is born of God. When, when you are born again, you're going to overcome the temptations of the world. Read what you got. The first book of John, chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. Come on. The lust of the flesh. You see what's in the world? The lust of the flesh. The world pushes you to lust after your flesh. Read. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. The world pushes you to lust after your eyes. Come on. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. To go against God's commandments. Because why? You indulge in the lust of your flesh and the lust of your eyes. Read. Is not of the Father. That's not of the Father, but it's of Satan. Come on. But is of the world. It's of Satan. Job 9 24. It's not of the world, but it's of Satan. Because Satan rules this world. He controls this world. He's the one that pushes sin, sin, and more sin. 24 hours a day through social media. Okay? Read that. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Come on. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Satan. The earth is given to Satan right now. Read. He, co he covered the faces of the judges. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Come on. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Read. If not. If he's not him. Come on. Where and who is he? Where and who is this man that has covered the faces of the judges and ruling the earth if he's not the white man? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go back to First John 5 and 4. We need to understand, correction is good. Chastisement is good. When you are corrected, don't get mad. Don't hold grudges. You understand? Don't have an evil eye towards your brother because he corrected you. Read what you got. The first book of John, chapter 5, verse 4. Read. For whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born again. Read. Overcometh the world. You're going to overcome the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Which is not of the Father, but it's of the world, but it's of Satan. Read. And this is the victory. This is the victory. Come on. That overcometh the world. That overcometh the world. You see, the Apostle John just says, overcometh the world. The world goes into what? What's in the world? Sin, evil, deceit. You understand? So our job, brothers and sisters, is to fight against all evil, within and without. You understand? Because why? We are the 12 tribes of Israel. We must repent. Our job is to return back to the Bible and do what it says.
Go back to Zerah 20. Let's try again. Chapter 20, verse 3. Come on. How good is it when thou art reproved? How good is it that when you are corrected, read? To show repentance. You must show repentance. How do you repent? Get that in Acts 3 19. It is good when you are corrected for you to show repentance. But it is not good that when you are corrected, you hold grudges. When you get corrected, don't hold grudges. Repent. You understand? Read them. Acts 3.19 The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Read Repent ye therefore Do what? Repent ye therefore Repent ye therefore Come on And be converted And be changed So when you repent You get converted Let's get that in Psalms 19 verse 7 Let's see what changes us When somebody says I'm born again But they are still wearing pants as a sister When somebody says I'm born again but they are still smoking weed. You understand? They are still smoking nyaube. You understand? They are still eating pork. They still hate their neighbor. They are not repented. They are not born again. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God, they are perfect. There is nothing wrong with the laws of God. That when the law says, thou shalt not covet, that's a perfect law. When the law says, don't steal, that's a perfect law. When the law says, love your neighbor as yourself, that's a perfect law. When the law says, don't look at, don't have an evil eye towards your brother, that's a perfect law. When the law says, don't hold grudges against your neighbor, that is a perfect law. There's nothing wrong with that. Read. Converting the soul. The laws of God will change your spirit, will change your mind, the way you think. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is sure, 100%. Come on. Making wise the simple. Because as a nation, we're simple. We need the laws of God to be wise. God says we're stupid, we're dumb. So in order for us to be wise, we need God's commandments. Okay? Go ahead. The statutes of the law are right. The statutes of God are right. Come on. Rejoicing the heart. They rejoice the heart. Because the laws of God are supposed to bring joy unto you. When you read the laws of God that says, Thou shalt not, and when you get mad, you're not going to get blessed. You're not going to overcome. So therefore, you're not going to have the spirit of joy. The reason why you see a lot of brothers and sisters, they're always grumpy. They're mad as hell. You understand? They're always like they're in deep thought. is because they hate the laws of God. Is that the reason? Then you, you always, hey, is, is everything okay, bro? Sis, are you fine? I'm fine, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bad attitude. You understand? Terrible character. Is because you hate God's commandments. That's why you're not going to have joy. You have to have joy in the laws of God. The same way you go to the doctor, you sick. The doctor says, hey, brother such and such, Mr. such and such, you've got uh, illness and such and such. This is the medication that's going to heal you. Listen, joy comes into your heart because you know you're going to be better. But for some ungodly reason, when it comes to God's commandments, we don't think the same way. You don't think the same way. Isn't it that you're supposed to find joy when the laws of God come out? Because it's supposed to heal you the same way you go to a doctor. You understand? The doctor says, don't worry, we got you. You are very excited because now you are able to shy 6 9 hmm? But when it comes to God's commandments, you have hatred in your heart. Now when the scriptures come out by the prophet say, bruh, you need to repent. This thing of holding grudges and all that, you're going to self-destruct. No, but they hate me. No, but you cannot tell me what to do. No, but you cannot talk to me like that. Shut the hell up, sit in some corner somewhere. And take the, medica the medication and be healed. But you see the point? That's what we do. Because we're sick in the head and mad in the stomach. Now read the Bible again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 8. Read. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes of the Most High God, they are right. Read. Rejoicing the heart. They doing what? Rejoicing the heart. If you find yourself not having joy, when a little mood swings, guess what? You hate God's laws. You don't believe that the laws of God is going to change you. That means you're not a new creature in Christ. You're still that old, wicked, grumpy Negro that you was in the world. Go ahead. The commandment of the Lord is pure. The commandments of God, they are pure. They are pure. They are perfect. Come on. Enlightening the eyes. They're going to enlighten your eyes. You're going to see spiritual things in this book. You're going to see the sins you're in so you can repent and get your life right. Go ahead. 
The fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord is clean. Is clear. Come on. Enduring forever. Endures forever. Read. The judgments of the Lord are true. The and judgments righteous. of the Lord are true and what? And righteous. And righteous. Come on. All together. All together. Meaning what? There's nothing short in the laws of God. Go ahead. More to be desired are they than gold. Stop right there. Read it again. What did he say? More to be desired. That the laws of God are to be more desired. You ought to desire the laws of God more than what? Than gold. Than gold. Because the laws of God, they are precious than gold. God's laws are precious than any mineral, any precious mineral you can find on this earth. The laws of God, they are better. Always. Read the verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 10. Come on. More to be desired are they than gold. The laws of God are more are supposed to be desired more than what? Than gold. Than gold. Come on. Yay. Than much fine gold. Than much fine gold. Even the best gold that has been refined, the laws of God is better. Because you might be thinking, but the laws of God, you know, you're telling me that gold is better than the laws of God. Yes. Because gold would not exist if God did not say let there be light. You understand? These minerals would not be here if it was not for the laws of God. You understand? Go ahead. Sweeter also than honey. They are sweeter than honey. Come on. And the honeycomb. And the honeycomb. So the laws of God, they are sweeter than honey. You understand? So when something is sweet, you want to eat them. When something is sweet, you desire them. When something is sweet, you want to be around that thing. You desire it. You long for it. You covet for that thing. Guess what? You must covet the laws of God. That's the covetousness that's allowed to covet God's commandment. Read. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. You see that? By what? By them. By the laws of God. Come on. Is thy servant warned. You see that? Is thy servant warned. Come on. And in keeping of them. In, they, and in keeping of the commandments. There is great reward. There is what? There is great reward. Of the kingdom and living forever on earth. Read. Who can understand his errors? Who can understand his errors? Come on. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Read again. Read again. What verse you went? Verse 12, sir. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 12. Read. Who can understand his errors? Read. Cleanse, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Because guess what? The laws is the one that understands the errors that we are in. That, that's what God does. Read that verse again, verse 12. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 12. Come on. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. So King David is praying, he's saying to the Father, clean me from my secret faults. Because there's things that you cannot confess before that you cannot tell us, but you better pray to the Lord and confess them before your Father which is in heaven. That's what the Lord is saying. And don't be what? Don't be faking the funk when you go before the Father. Keep it real with the Most High. Say, Father, I've sinned. I've done this and this and this. Please forgive me. Help me to overcome this thing. Read. Keep yes. Reading. Of course, yes. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 12. Yes, I'm talking to you. Come on. Who can understand his errors? Who can understand his errors? You must understand your own errors. The Lord will help you to do that through the, part, the mouth of the prophets. Come on. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Read. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. You see that thing? It says keep your servant also from presumptuous sin. This is the prayer we all must pray. What is a presumptuous sin? A presumptuous sin is what? Is the sin that you know. Listen. You doing something that you know is wrong. Willful sin. Come on. Let them not have dominion over you. Don't let the sins that you are in, the pre your presumptuous sin, have dominion over you. Meaning don't let sin rule over you. All that, Romans 6. Romans chapter 6. Start up with 12. You understand? Don't let sin rule over your mortal body. That you obey your, your body in the last day of. Read what you got. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Come on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. You see what the Lord is saying? And don't let sin rule over your mortal body. Don't let sin rule over you. For instance, let's say you struggle with your tongue. You cannot keep your mouth shut. Your job is to do what? Your job is to apply God's commandments. Say, you know what? When you're about to say something, just be quiet. How about that? Guess what? You control the tongue because the tongue is full of deadly poison. 
When you're about to tell a lie, how about just be quiet and say nothing? Get that in Surah 10. You know that scripture right there? That's Surah 19. Eh? Yes, Surah 19 verse 10. Read what you got. That scripture right there in Ecclesiasticus. Because some of you brothers, you like women. Oh yes, yeah. I told you, shots are going to be fired on this day. Directly or indirectly. Some of you brothers, you cannot keep your mouth shut. You always have to, you, you the one that you always have to be here. Just shut the hell up. And listen for once. Read the Bible. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verse 10. Come on. If thou hast heard a word. If you've heard a word. Read. Let it die with thee. Let it die with you. If you've heard a rumor, let it die with you. How about that? Go ahead. Watch this. And be bold. And be what? And be bold. Come on. It will not trust thee. The Lord says that word is not going to burst you. Meaning keep it within you. You understand? I'm noticing like a, especially when during feasts, the Lord don't say don't be happy. But what I'm noticing is that some brothers, they just cannot keep quiet. You just want to be heard all the time. Just be quiet. Read on. A fool travailed with the word. You see that thing? A fool struggles with the word. They cannot keep quiet. You gotta say something. Hmm? Just be quiet. Go ahead. As a woman in the labor of the Stop, the stop. So as a what? As a woman. Stop. As a what? As a woman. So some of you brothers, you like to gossip more than their sisters do. You just like to gossip. As a woman. Like a woman. Because you are a woman. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 11. Read. A fool traveled to the world. Because if you are raised by your mother, yes, you're going to be like that. If you are raised by your mother as a man, you are going to be just like that. You're not going to keep quiet. You always going to want to be heard. You want to say something. Just be quiet. Listen to some breakdowns coming out. Listen to some wisdom coming out and just be quiet. Read on. As a woman in labor of a child. As a woman in labor of a child. Read. As an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh. You see that thing? I've been arrow sticking in a man's thigh is a painful thing. It says, a fool... A tail bearer, a person that cannot keep their mouth shut, a, the, a word is like that inside of them. It's so painful, like somebody sticking a knife in your thigh. That's how painful it is for them to keep it in. They can't do it. Read. So is a word within a fool's belly. You see that? So is a word within a fool's belly. Because what is the Lord saying? You stupid. Go ahead. Admonish a friend. Meaning correct your friend. Read. It may be, it may be, he had not done it. Read. And if he have done it. If he has done it, come on. That he do it no more. That he do it no more. That he don't do it no more. Now go back to Psalms 19. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 13. Come on. Keep Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Read. Let him not have dominion over me. Let, don't let your sins have dominion over you. Come on. Then shall I be upright. Then you're going to be upright before the Father. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Go back to Romans 6. Hold that. We're coming back to Psalms 19. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Come on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let sin rule over you. Come on. That ye should obey in the last thereof. That you should obey your sin in the day of your last. Hold that, Surah 18, verse 30. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy last. Don't go after your last. Read. But the refrain thy But what? Refrain. But what? Refrain. But abstain. To refrain means to abstain. But abstain, come on. But refrain thyself from thine appetite. Uh, abstain yourself from your appetite. If your appetite is oral sex, abstain from it. If your appetite is having sex outside of marriage, abstain from it. If your appetite is what? Twerking on TikTok, abstain from it. If it's your appetite is to take videos of yourself, naked self, and share it on TikTok and YouTube, and uh, what's the other one? WhatsApp, abstain from it. You understand? If your appetite is to play the whore in your father's house, abstain from it. Read. 
if thou givest thy soul the desire that pleases if you give your soul if you give your mind the desires that please it, which is those last that you must abstain from come on she will make thee a laughing stock you see your sin will make you a laughing stock your sin will make people laugh at you go ahead she will make thee a laughing stock to the enemy to your enemies come on that malign that wish evil upon you come on take not pleasure in much good cheer don't take much pleasure in good cheer meaning what you taking pleasure in the lust that you indulge in don't take pleasure in that the lord says don't rejoice in journaling don't rejoice in watching porn don't rejoice in masturbating don't rejoice in using cucumbers because when you are itching go ahead neither be tied neither, neither be tied to the experience thereof to the expense thereof read that again the book of ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 32 read Take not pleasure in much good cheer. Don't take much pleasure in good cheer. Come on. Neither be tied to the expense thereof. Don't be tied to the expense thereof because guess what? You're going to waste yourself in that sin. Go ahead. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. Okay, that's it on that. Go back to Psalms 19. What verse we at? Verse 12. Is that verse 12? Verse 13. Read verse 13. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 13. Read. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. You see what? This is King David is praying in the spirit here. Come on. Let them not have dominion over me. Don't let your sins have dominion over you. He's praying to the Most High. Come on. Then shall I be upright. Then you are going to be upright. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read. And I shall be innocent from the great, from the great transgression. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Read that again. Then I shall be what? Then I shall be innocent. Then I shall be what? Then I shall be innocent. You see, when you repent, when you abstain from your sins, you are going to be innocent. From what? From the great transgression. From the great transgressions. Meaning from the great sins. Okay? Go back to Romans 6 now. Verse 12 again. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Read. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let sin rule over you. That's what the Lord is saying. What is sin? 1 John 3 and 4. Let's get the definition of sin in the Bible. 1 John chapter 3 verse. Let's understand what is sin. Because some of us we confuse about that. We need to understand what this is. Read what you got. Come on. The first book of John chapter 3 verse 4. Read. Whosoever committed sin, whosoever commits sin, come on, transgresseth also the law. You breaking God's laws, read. For sin, because sin, come on, is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of God's laws. Sin is not missing the mark, like they say in the Christian church. Sin is the breaking of God's commandments. So go back now, Psalms chapter no Romans six verse twelve. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Come on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let sin rule over you. Don't let the breaking of God's laws control you. Because guess what? When you keep going back and back and forth to your sin, that sin is ruling over you. If you cannot let go of lying, the spirit, the lying demon is ruling over you. If you cannot get rid of sexual immorality, fornication, that sin is ruling over you. Okay, come on. Then you should obey it in the last thereof. Because you're going to obey that sin in the day of your last. Because that day, you're lusting to masturbate. You're lusting to watch porn. You want to see big booty women. That's the last. That sin is ruling over you. You understand? Read. Neither yield ye your members as an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. He says, don't, don't yield your body as an instrument. Don't use your body as an instrument of unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Sin. Okay, come on. But yield yourselves unto God. But you must give yourself unto the Lord. That's what we all must do. We must give ourselves unto the Lord as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto the Most High God by Jesus Christ. Read. As those that are alive from the dead. Because we are alive from the dead. We were dead in the world, spiritually dead. Now we are alive because Christ allowed us to remember who we are. To bethink ourselves. Read. And your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto God. You see that thing? Go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Because sin shall not have dominion over you. He's repeating it again in verse 12. Come on. For ye are not under the law. Because we are not under the law of sin and death. Romans 8 and 1. Watch how this comes together. Read it. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation. There is no condemnation. What is the condemnation? Death. There is no death and condemnation in what? 
to them which are in Christ Jesus. To them that are now under Christ, under grace. Read. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the law of animal sacrifice. Come on. But after the spirit. But after the spirit. John 6, 63. Let's get there. Let's understand what is the spirit. There is no condemnation to them of us that are in Christ Jesus. All of us were in Christ now. There is no condemnation because Christ has given us the spirit to repent. You understand? He's given us the grace period to get it together. Read it. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Come on. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that quickens. Come on. The flesh profited nothing. The flesh will not profit you nothing. Sin is not going to profit you. Read. The words that I speak unto you. The words that Christ spoke unto us. They are what? They are spirit. They are spirit. Come on. And they are life. And they are life. They are life. Go back now. Okay, Romans 6 verse 14. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Come on. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not rule over you. Is that what we were? Yes, sir. Read. For ye are not under the law. For we are not under the law. No, no. Romans 8 verse 2 now. Read verse 2. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Come on. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Because Christ does not come without laws. Like they teach in the Christian church. Read. Has made me free. Has made us free. Come on. From the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. The law of condemnation. What was the law of condemnation? The law of animal sacrifice. Go back now. Romans 6.14. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Read. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Come on. For ye are not under the law. We are not under the law of sin and death. Read. But under grace. But we are under grace now. We are under Christ. You understand? So get that entire verse 11. We are no longer under the law of sin and death. We are under the law of grace. We are under Christ now. You understand? And because we are under Christ, we are, we, we are, Christ did not give us license to sin. Now read that. Titus 2 verse 11. You know what? Before you get there, get Galatians 2 16. Galatians 2 verse 16. Christ did not give us a license to sin. You understand? Grace is not license for us to break God's commandments. As we always do. Read what you got. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Read. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. A man, we are not justified by the works of the law. What was the works of the law? Animal sacrifice. Read. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. But us having faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. Read. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. We believe in Christ. Come on. That we might be justified. That we, that we, that we, the Israelites, the 12 tribes, we might be what? Might be justified. We might be justified. Justification goes into forgiveness. That we might be forgiven. Come on. By the faith of Christ. By the faith we have in the sacrifice that Christ made. Read. And not by the works of the law. And might not by the works of animal sacrifice. Read. For by the works of the law. By the works of animal sacrifice. Read. Shall no flesh be justified. We are not going to be forgiven. Read. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ. But if we seek to be forgiven by Christ. If we seek to be forgiven by Christ. Come on. We ourselves are also found sinners. We are found sinners. We found to be breaking the laws of God. Come on. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is Christ therefore the minister of sin? Did Christ minister unto us to break his laws? Come on. God forbid. Meaning no. Christ did not give us license to break his commandments. Romans 2 verse 13. We're coming back here. We need to understand this. We cannot use grace as a license to break God's laws. Grace is a time that has been given to us to get our minds right before the Lord returns. His second coming. Read it. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Come on. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. The hearers of the Lord are not just before God. Because you cannot be a hearer and not a doer of the word. Read. But the doers of the law shall be justified. You see that? But the doers of the law shall be justified. We are only going to be justified if we obey and apply God's laws. Go back now. Galatians 2 verse 17. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. Read. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, well, if while we seek to be forgiven under Christ, we ourselves are also also are found sinners. We are found breaking God's commandments. Read. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Did he give us license to break his laws? 
Should I sin? Should I not sin? I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Should I masturbate? Should I not masturbate? Should I lie? Should I not lie? Hmm? Read. God forbid. Meaning no. Come on. For if I build again the things which I destroy. If you build, you know what? Before we get there, get that in Romans 6 and 1. Christ did not give us license to sin. He did it. Grace is for us to give, he's given us a lot of time for us to get our minds right. Read. The book Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Come on. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Come on. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue breaking God's laws? That grace may abound. Because we are under grace? God forbid. Meaning no. No. Romans 3 31. Just because we are under grace doesn't mean it's license to have for us to sin. We must still keep God's commandments in our mortal bodies and not allow sin to have dominion over us. The minute you, have, you allow sin to have dominion over you, it means sin is ruling over you and you are worshipping it. Read. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 31. Come on. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we void the law? Do we do away with the laws of God through what? Through faith. Through our faith in Christ? God forbid. Meaning no. Read. Yes. 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 Come on. We establish the law. Yes. We do the law. We still obey the commandments. Give me the Sirach 15 verse 20. Christ did not give us license to break his laws because now we are under grace. He is not the minister of sin. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Read. He that commanded no man to do it. He, he, read that verse right. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Come on. He had commanded no man to do wickedly. Christ commanded no man to do wickedly. Read. Neither had he given any man license to sin. He did not give any man license to sin. Christ did not give us license to break his laws. Go back to Galatians 2, verse 17. One more again. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 17. Come on. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, while we seek to be justified by Christ, meaning forgiven under Christ, read, we ourselves are also found sinners. We are found sinners. We found breaking the commandments. Read. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Did he give us license to break his commandments? God forbid. Meaning no, he did not. Read. For if I build again the things which I destroy. If you build again the things that you destroy, what does that mean? You come into this truth. You repent in Christ. You get your life right. Then you go back into your sin. You building again the things which you destroyed. Read. I make myself a transgressor. You are making yourself a sinner. Read. For I, for I, though the law, through the law, am dead to the law. He says what? Read that verse again. Read, read, read again. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 19. Come on. For I, through the law, for I, through the law, come on, am dead to the law. Am dead to the law. He says through the law, am dead to the law. What law is he talking about? Animal sacrifice. Come on. That I might live unto God. You that you may live unto God. Now we are under grace. We keep in the commandments under grace. Read. For am for I am I am crucified with Christ. He says he's crucified with Christ because what? You must be born again. You must die. You must you must the old man must be put to death. So the new man can live. Read. Nevertheless, I live. Nevertheless, I live because now I keep the commandments. Read. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. You see that thing? He says, not, not, not yet I, but Christ that now lives in me. What does that mean? Give me that in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. Watch this. He says, he's not the one doing it, but the Spirit of Christ that's now in him, commanding him to keep the commandments. Read. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. For the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of Christ, it constrains us. Meaning what? It disciplines us. Not to do whatever the hell we want. Read. Because we thus judge. Because we thus judge. And as we judge, we, we cannot judge in hypocrisy. Read. That if one died for all. If one died for all, because Christ died for all 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Then we're all dead. Then we're all dead. Come on. And that he died for all. He read all Israel, read. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. You see that thing? So now that Christ died for us, you know, your life don't belong to you. But it belongs to who? Come on. But unto him which but, died. Yeah, but unto him that what? But unto him which died for them. Uh -huh. 
and rose again. You see that? So now, we don't live to ourselves now. We live to the one who died for us and rose again. Likewise, the old man must die just like Christ died so that the new man can rise and can be born again. Now, you are a new creature in Christ now. Keep reading. Wherefore, henceforth no we, no man after the flesh. We don't know any man after the flesh now. Why? Because now we are spiritual now. We keep the commandments. Read. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. We have known Christ after the flesh. Read. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. We know him no more. Come on, in the flesh. Come on. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. If any man or woman be in Christ. Now that we are under Christ, read. He is a new creature. We are a new creature now. That's why I don't want to see nobody walking around being grumpy. The grumpiest. We all know that brother right there, mm, he will just, man, he's like a cancer. Read again. The book, second book Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. You are a new creation. So, don't come to any of us and say, but me back in the day. I don't want to hear that. You back in the day. No, Christ said, what did the Bible say? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he is a new creature. You are a new creature. So you can't say, well, not back in the day, this used to happen to you. Not to hell with that. You are a new creature now. Keep the commandments. You are a new creature. Pray for the spirit of joy. You are a new creature. Stop being grumpy. You are a new creature. Stop being depressed. You understand that? It's time to repent. Keep God's commandments. Read on. Old things are passed away. Old, 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 old. The old you, the old nigga is dead. The old ducky is dead. The old you is past. Read. Behold, all, all things are become new. Behold, all things now, they have become new. Now you are a new creature in Christ now. You understand? You born again. You keep God's commandments. Read. And all things are of God. And all things are of God. Who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. You see that thing now? The most High God, he reconciled us back unto him through Christ dying on the cross for us. Read. And had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You see that thing? He gave us the ministry of reconciliation to be reconciled back to the Father. Read. To win. That God was in Christ, uh -huh. reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the twelve tribes unto himself, because we are the world without end. Understand that thing? So go back to Romans chapter 6. Okay? Romans 6. Let's go back there. We need to understand these things, brothers and sisters, because guess what? If you cannot deal with your own personal issues, you are not going to get the kingdom. You must understand that the things that we're all going through, those are the things that are standing between you and getting eternal life and being in the kingdom when the Lord returns. So you have to examine. Self-examination is the solution to this. Self-examination is the gateway to the kingdom. Is the gateway to receive eternal life. Read what you got. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Come on. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. When you find yourself sin ruling over you, you double-minded, you confused, you don't know whether you should sin or not sin, guess what? The most high God cannot deal with you yet. Because you are undecided. You're not, you're not sure, should I break this law? Should I not do it? Huh? You're confused. Why? Because that sin is still ruling over you. You understand? Go ahead. For ye are not under the law. Because you are not under the law of sin and death. No more. Read. But under grace. Now we are under grace. Now go to Titus 2 verse 11. So we understand what is this grace. Because grace, we understood that grace is not license for us to break God's commandments. The most High God did not give us license to break his laws. Alright? Read what you got. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. Come on. Had appeared to all men. Read. Teaching us. This is what grace is going to teach each and every one of us when we come into this truth. Read. Denying ungodliness. Grace is going to teach you to deny ungodliness. What is ungodliness? 
sin. Read. And worldly lust. So grace is a teacher. Grace, the grace of God is supposed to teach us to deny. What does it mean to deny? It means to abstain. To reject. You understand? That's what it means to deny. To deny all manner of ungodliness. That's what grace is supposed to teach each and every one of us. Read. We should live soberly. We must grace supposed to teach you to live soberly. To be sober. Can't be high. Because today we see sisters, Master Magali Zamalek. Eh? Can it milk stout? A sister, a whole sister can put her face. Come come up here. Who's very red? Who's very working? Who's very lion lager? We see them now, Ben. Who's very good? That's not a woman anymore. That's a man who's unrepented. You understand? So I'm just using that as an example. You understand? You see brothers now sagging their pants when we see their underwear. That's not a man. You understand? You don't know what he is. Okay? Blood in their hair, wearing tight pants. Barbara the spandex now. Barbara the makings. But you know, is leggings for men. Makings. That's what's going on today. Give them rap. Sagging their pants. They want fleece Johnson. We want you go. Keep going. Righteously. Righteously. Grace is supposed to teach you to live righteously. What does it mean to live righteously? To live righteously. Let's get to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Let's get there. It's fine when you can look at the content. You get used to it. You'll be alright. Alright? You'll be okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Oh, praise, oh, praise to the Mosa, oh, praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, another addition, okay? We are here to learn the truth in the Bible as it is written. So tonight's topic is called War Before the War. War Before the War. Brothers, we must, we must understand, we are at war. The war that we are in is not a physical war, it's a spiritual warfare. We must prepare for that war to come. We must prepare for the war that's coming. But the war that we must prepare for right now is a spiritual warfare. We must be in the battle. And I'm talking to you men particularly now. We must prepare for the war that's coming. You understand? The war within us and the war without. Sisters too, you must prepare. You must prepare for yourself for the war that's coming. The war, World War Three. But the war that we must, we must be in right now for the preparation of the actual war that's coming, the final war is the one we're going to go over tonight. So pay close attention. You understand? And take notes. All right? Get John 8:32. Let's start with that. John chapter 8, verse 32. Let's get there. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. The truth will set you free. The truth will make you free. Christ is talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Jump up to verse 31 now. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Come on. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So Christ did not go to any other nation except the 12 tribes of Israel. Read again. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Read. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Christ to those Jews which believed on him. So Christ taught the twelve tribes of Israel. He didn't go. He did not go to go. He did not go to teach any other nation outside of the twelve tribes. Don't be fooled, brothers and sisters. Read. If you continue in my word. If you continue in my word, the key word is to continue in the word of God. You understand? To be a disciple, you must continue in the word of God. Read. Then are you my disciples indeed? Then are you Christ's disciples indeed? A disciple means a student. Then are you a student of Christ indeed, if you continue in keeping God's commandments. Read. And you shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth, if you continue in the word of God. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall set you free. Let's see what the truth is. Get that in Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 142. Okay. 
Let's understand what the truth is, because many of our people don't know what the truth is. Biblically, they don't know what it is. They've been going to church all their lives, but they don't know what the truth is. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. God's righteousness is everlasting. Read. And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the what? And thy law is the truth. And the law is the truth. So God's laws, that's the truth. Go back to where he was at now. John 8, 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. You shall know the laws of God. You shall learn the laws of God. And when you learn the laws of God, you must continue in them. Then are you Christ's disciples indeed. Read. And the truth shall make you free. And the laws of God will deliver us from captivity. That's what Christ is telling us right there. God's commandments is how we're going to come out of captivity. Is how we're going to get delivered. Give me that in Baruch chapter 3. Because today we're still in slavery. We're still in captivity. You understand? We're still under these nations as captives. Baruch 3. We are here this day. Let's get there. Baruch 3 verse 8. Okay, come on. The book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Read. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day in slavery. We are yet this day as slaves in oppression. Come on. Where thou hast scattered us. Where the Lord has scattered us. Come on. For a reproach and a curse. For a reproach and a curse. Because now we become a reproach and a curse to these nations. Read. And to be subject to payments. And we are subject to payments. Come on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. According to the what? According to all the iniquities of our fathers. According to all the sins of our forefathers. Read. Which departed from the Lord our God. Because our forefathers departed from God's commandments that he taught unto them. So today as the children, guess what? We go through the same fate. We are under the same curses. We are under the same judgments. Why? Because of what? Because of sin. Breaking of God's laws. Go back to John 8, verse 32 again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the laws of God. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the laws of God will deliver you from captivity. Because we are yet this day in our captivity. Where the Lord has scattered us in South Africa. Come on. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed. They, the scribes and Pharisees answered him says, We are Abraham's seed. Read. Right? And were never in bondage to any man. Because they were living better than the rest of the Israelites. That's why it says we are never in bondage to any man. Hold that John 11 verse 47. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they were living better than the rest of Israel. That's why they didn't believe that they were in slavery. They didn't believe that they were in captivity. They didn't believe that. Read that. The book of John chapter 11 verse 47. Come on. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council. Come on. And said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. For this man doeth many miracles. Come on. If we let him thus alone. If we let him thus alone to continue to do these many miracles. Read. All men will believe on him. All men of Israel will believe on him. Come on. And the Romans. And the what? And the Romans. And the Romans because they answer to Rome. Rome was looking after them. You understand? Rome was their uncle Tom. Read. Shall come and take away both our places. And he said the Romans shall come and take away both our place, meaning in society, you understand, and what? And nation. And nation. You see that? So the only thing they cared about was their place in Roman society and the benefits that came with that. That's all they cared about. They didn't give a damn about their people. That's why they said, we are never in bondage to any man. Why? Because they thought, because they are living better than the rest of Israel, they are not in slavery. That's the same thing many of our people are doing today. That's the same mindset they've got. And they are wrong. Go back. John 8. Verse 33 again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 33. Read. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. We be Abraham's seed. That's what they said. We are the seed of Abraham, which was correct. Come on. And were never in bondage to any man. Because they were living better than the rest of the Israelites. Read. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? You see that thing? Because they didn't believe that they were slaves. That's many of us, the bourgeoisie Negroes today. They don't believe that they are slaves. Why? Because some of them are entertainers. Some of them are ball players. Some of them are soccer players. Some of them are rugby players and all that. Some of them are who give them rap. They don't believe they are in slavery. Read. Really? Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, 
I say unto you, come on, whosoever committed sin, whosoever breaks the laws of God, is the servant of sin. They are serving that sin. That means sin has dominion over them. Read. And the servant abided not in the house forever. Read. You see, you know, it says you're not going to abide in the house of Rome forever. Rome is not going to look after you forever. Come on. But the Son abideth forever. But the Son of God abides forever. And if you follow him, we also will abide forever. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free. If the Son of God therefore shall make you free. Come on. He shall be free indeed. You're going to be delivered indeed. They didn't believe that. Because why? Because they were, they were, given, uh, they were given positions in Rome. They were given money in Rome. They were living large. So they didn't give a damn about the rest of Israel that was struggling. You understand? So when the apostles, they followed Christ, they kept the commandments, they went out to teach the people the gospel of repentance because they understood that's the job we all must, we must be in. That's the calling that the Lord has called us for. Get that in 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. When it says, you see your calling, brethren. Verse 26, come on. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 26. Read. For ye see your calling, brethren. For you see your calling, brethren. Your calling is what? Your calling into this truth is for you to learn this truth, repent, get your life right, and walk out there and go and wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. That is the job. You're not going to be here and be a professional student. You understand? Go ahead. How that not many wise men after the flesh Wise men, not many wise men after the flesh are called, meaning after sin, after the workings of this world. Not many of them are called into this truth, but you are called into this truth. Read. Not many mighty. Not many mighty men are called. They are mighty in society. Come on. Not many nobles. Not many nobles in society. They are called into this truth. Read. Are called. Read. But God has chosen the foolish things. Of the world. We are the foolish things of the world because when people look at us, they say we are fools. They say we're crazy. They say these brothers are going to be out there in the street corners shouting this Bible out. Keep going. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world. We are the foolish things of the world. Come on. To confound the wise. We are confounding, we are confounding the wise men of this world. The wise men of Esau. The wise men of our people that have learned from Esau. Read. And God has chosen the weak things of the world. We are the weak things of the world because we have no power. We have no might. We've got nothing in the society. We are the bottom of all nations. The Lord said, I'm going to use you. You live in the ghettos. You are living in the slums. The Lord says, I'm going to use you to confound the wise, the mighty that are not called, the nobles that are not called. Read. To confound the things which are mighty. We're going to conf we're confounding the things which are mighty with the word of God. Go ahead. And base things of the world. And we are the base things of the world. Come on. And things which are despised. And we are despised by all nations on earth, including our own people that hate this truth. Read. Have God chosen. Have God chosen. The Lord has chosen the base things of the world to confound the wise. Read. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. You see what it's saying? And things which are not. Listen, we are not mighty in this society. We are at the bottom. We are not, we are not cared for in this society. We are at the bottom. We are downtrodden. No nation cares for us, but the Lord does. Read. That no flesh should glory in his presence. You see that thing? The flesh that glory in the, in the presence is what? The, 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 the proud men. Those that are in the world. Those that speak lawfully concerning oppression. Read. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. We are in Christ now. Come on. Who of God is made unto us wisdom. Read. And righteousness. And sanctification. And redemption. You see that thing? So the Lord is using us now to do these great and mighty works. Read. That according as it is written. According as it is written in the Bible. Come on. He that glorified, let him glorify in the Lord. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So what are we reading? The Bible. The most that God has called us into this truth. And we are at war, brothers and sisters. Sisters, don't think you're not part of this war. You are part of this war. But it's a spiritual fight. You must fight, brothers. You have to war. You must war in this Bible. You must learn to fight the good fight of faith. Understand that thing. Read that verse again. 
the book of Romans, the, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 31. Go ahead. That according to according as it is written, he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. We must glory in the Lord, not in ourselves, but in the Lord. Understand that thing. We are at war, we are under attack. The nations they want to overthrow and destroy us. You understand? But the Lord is with us. You understand? We must trust in the Lord. Because the most high God will give us the victory. Understand that thing. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 20. Because when you examine us as a nation, the nations don't give a damn about us. You understand? The nation don't care about us. And they don't think we can rise up and take over the kingdom. And get our kingdom back. They are so confident that they've destroyed us. They don't think we can wake up and rise up from the ashes. We are waking up, brothers and sisters. We are waking up. Watch this. Psalms 50 verse 20. Watch this thing right here. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 verse 20. Come on. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Now, the Lord is talking about Esau here. This is talking about Esau, Edom, the white man, a.k.a. Read it again, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 verse 20. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Because Esau, they sit in their think tanks. They sit in their secret plots. They come together, the UN, the governments of the world, the think tanks, to plot and scheme how to overthrow the 12 tribes of Israel. Read again verse 20. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 20. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. They sit and speak against us because guess what? Jacob is Esau's brother. Read. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. They slander us through the media. That's how they slander us. They slander us through the media. Give me Second Maccabees chapter 7 verse 31. You see, Esau, Edom, Idumia, they slander us through the media. I'm going to show you that. Second Maccabees chapter 7 verse 31. Watch this. The second book of Maccabees chapter 7 verse 31. Read. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Read that again. What did you say? And thou... There has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. You see, the white man has been the author of great mischief against the Hebrews. With the Hebrews, he's been the what? The author of mischief against us. They slander us through the media. They say we are a hate group. They say we are anti-Semitic. They say we're teaching hate when we're teaching strictly biblical. Read again, verse 31. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 31. Read. And thou, there has been an... And that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. You see that thing? They've been, they've been the author of all mischief. All mischief against us, the Hebrews. Read. Shall not escape the hand of God. They are not going to escape the hand of God. That's what the Bible is saying. They are not going to escape the hand of God. If they, well, if they continue to slander us in their media. In their, using their popular persuasion. You understand? Get that in First Ezra chapter 5 verse 73. First Ezra 5. We need to understand what these nations are doing to us behind closed doors. But the only way for us to overcome, we must keep God's commandments. Okay? Read them. The first book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 73. Read. And by their secret plots. And by their what? By their secret plots. By their secret plots. Remember it says what? It says they are slender as their own mother's son. By their secret plots. That's how they slander us. Read. And popular persuasions. And popular persuasions. That's their media. You understand? That's their news media. Their news channels. That's their social media. That's how they slander us. And they use our own people to slander us too. Through what? Through music. Through entertainment. Through movies. Look at that demonic movie called The Woman King. What is that? They are slandering us. You understand? Read that verse again. The first book of Ezra. Chapter, six, chapter 5, verse 23. Read. And by their secret plots. Read. And popular persuasions. And popular persuasions. Come on. And commotions. And commotions. They're causing great, great commotions on the media. In the media. Come on. They hinder the finishing of the building. All the time that King Cyrus lived. You see what the objective is? Is to hinder us from rebuilding our nation back up. That is the whole objective behind this. Read. So, they were hindered from building for the space of two years. Now we are, we are what? We are hindered from building. That's why now, if you notice, what are they doing to our YouTube videos? 
they're shutting them down. That our, our, our Instagram posts, they are blocking us. You understand? They are shutting our accounts down. But guess what? They don't understand the most that God has a, has, a, has, a, has a plan. That plan is what? Give me that in Luke 14, 23. This is the plan right here. Whatever Esau does, whatever the secret plot that he's planning to do, that they are already executing behind closed doors, they are shutting down our pages and all that. Listen, the most that God has a bigger plan than Esau has. Luke 14, 23. This is the plan. And Esau will not be able to stop this. The train is already in motion. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord sent, said unto the servant, Read. Go out into the highways and hedges. He says, go out into the what? Into the highways and hedges. He says, go out into the highways and hedges. Go to the street corners. Hit the streets. Because that's what we're doing. From sun up to midnight, we teach the gospel. You understand? More than 15 hours standing up, teachings from sun up to sundown, precept upon precept, educating our people. So Esau will not be able to stop this. Read again. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 24. Read. Verse 23. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the seven, Go out into the highways and hedges. Go out into the highways and hedges. Come on. And compel them to come in. Compel the twelve tribes of Israel to come into this truth. Read. That my house may be filled. That the house of Israel may be filled with all twelve tribes of Israel. Sons and daughters. Okay. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now, go back to where it was at now. You know what? Give me, give me that in Proverbs 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1. Whatever secret plots they've got, they are not going to work. Proverbs chapter 1. Watch this. Verse 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Read. Wisdom cried without. Wisdom cried without. Wisdom cried without. Where? Come on. She uttered her voice in the street. In the what? In the street. In the highways and hedges. In the streets. The highways and hedges. Come on. She cried in the chief places. In the chief place of the cause. It is in the chief places of concourse. Read. She cried in the chief place of concourse. Come on. In the openings of the gates. In the opening of the gates. Come on. In the city, she uttered her words. You see that? In the cities, she uttered the words. In the cities where the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. In the Gazis. In the Lokshins. That's where we're going. You understand? In the parts. We teach the gospel. Wherever our people are, that's where we go. The flyer missions that we're doing. Guess what? The most of God is with us, brothers. Esau is not going to be able to stop this thing. He's not going to be able to stop this great movement on planet Earth that the world has never seen. Go back to where it was at now. Go back to Psalms 50, verse 20 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 20. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Read. Thou slanderest thy, thine own mother's son. They slander us through the media. Come on. These things hast thou done. These things the white man has done over and over and still doing. Read. And I kept silence. The Lord says, and I kept silence. Read. Thou thoughtest that I, that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Because the white man thinks the, the most that God is with him. That's why he's allowed to do all this evil on this earth and he has not received his just judgment yet. That's why he thinks the Lord is with him. No, the Lord is not with him. The Lord is using him. You understand? Read. But I will reprove thee. The Lord says, but I'm going to correct you, you Esau. I'm going to correct you. Come on. And set them in order. And set my children in order. Come on. Before thine eyes. While they're watching. The Lord says, I'm going to set my children in order. Yes, you slander them. Yes, you speak evil of them. Yes, you're planning secret things against them to overthrow them. The Lord says, I'm going to set my children in order before your eyes. Read that part again. And I will what? And I will reprove thee. Pick it up from there. But I will reprove thee. Uh -huh. And set them in order before thine eyes. And set them in order before thine eyes. And set them in order before thine eyes. That's why we hit the streets. That's why we go out there. That's why Esau go come, come out there with cameras, video of taping us. They think we don't see them. We see them. Sending our own people to come and spy on us at camp. Trying to figure out where the understanding is. We see them. But the mission is a go. Go ahead. 
Now consider this, ye that forget God. Because he so forget has forgotten the Lord. Because he thinks he's God on this earth. Read. Really? Lest I tear you in pieces. The Lord says he's going to tear Esau in pieces. Read. Really? And there be none to deliver. Then nobody going to deliver Esau out of the Lord's land. Nobody will do it. The, the Egyptians were not able to be delivered out of the Lord's land. The Assyrians were not delivered. The Babylonians were not delivered. You understand? The Greeks, the Romans, the Persians. Guess what? Esau is not different. America is not different. Europe is not different. They are all going to get overthrown by the Most High God and His Son, the Christ. Now read verse 20 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 20. Not 21. 21 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 21. Read. These things has thou done, and I kept silent. These things has Esau done, and the Lord says, I kept silence. Come on. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. The Lord, the more the white man thinks, the Lord is with him. Go ahead. But I will reprove. The Lord says, I'm going to reprove you, Esau. Come on. And set them in order before thine eyes. He says, I'm going to set my children in order before thine eyes. Give me the book of Isaiah 9, verse 6. The Lord says, I'm going to set my children in order. Guess what? This is the war before the war. The Lord says, He's going to set us in order before their eyes while they watch. The Lord says, I'm going to do it. You think they're not going to wake up? They're going to wake up all right. Our job is to prepare for that war. We prepare for the war to come. But for us to be able to, oh, to get through the war to come, we must get through this war. Understand that the spiritual war that we're in. Isaiah 9 and 6. Read it. The book of Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. Come on. For unto us a child is born. And to us a child is born. The us is all 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And to us a son is given. A son is given. The black Messiah Jesus the Christ. Read. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government is the 12 tribes of Israel that shall be upon his shoulder. Read. And his name shall be called Wonderful. His name is called Wonderful. Come on. Counselor. Counselor. The mighty God. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. Read. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Come on. Of the increase of his government. Of the increase of his government. What, what, what is his government? The 12 tribes of Israel. We are the Lord's government. Come on. And peace. There shall be no end. There shall be no end because we're going to rule forever. Come on. Upon the throne of David. Upon the throne of David because Christ is the son of David. Ray. And upon his kingdom to order it. To do what? To order it. To do what? To order it. To do what? To order it. To order it. To order it. To order it. He says, I'm going to set them in order before your eyes. Read. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. You see that? To order it and to establish it with judgment and justice forever and ever. Come on. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this thing to order us into a government. Into a government. Into a what? Into an army. That's the government. We are God's army. Understand that? Okay? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 126. The Lord says he's going to set us in order before their eyes. The, the war, war before the war. The ordering of the 12 tribes of Israel is preparation for the war to come. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. This is the preparation of it. This is how the Lord says, I'm going to order it. I'm going to set my children in order before your eyes. Read again, verse 26. The, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 26. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. He says he's going to restore our judges as at the first. Judges means leaders. He says I'm going to restore your leaders as at the first from the time of Moses. Read. And thy counselors as at the beginning. And thy counselor as at the beginning. Come on. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. We're going to be called after this. After the Lord, the Most High God, restore our judges as at the first, afterwards, we are going to be called the city of righteousness. Right now, we are not called the city of righteousness. The nations don't call us wise. The nations call us niggas. They call us duckies. They call us scuffers and blackies. That's what they call us. They don't call us wise. Why? Because the Most High God is still restoring us back to honor. He's still restoring the, one, the army that we are. Read again verse 26. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 26. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. Come on. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Read. Afterward, thou shalt be called the, the city of righteousness, 
The faithful city. The faithful city. That's why he's saying right there. Give me that in Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because right now, the nations don't call us the city of righteousness. They don't call us that. You understand? They don't call us that. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Read. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. The Lord taught us statutes and judgments at the hand of Moses. Read. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. Even as the Lord our God commanded us. Come on. That ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Uh -huh. Read. Keep therefore, the, keep therefore and do the keep, We must keep therefore and do the commandments of God. For this is your wisdom. For this is your wisdom. The commandments of God is our wisdom. Read. And your understanding. And our understanding. The commandments of God is our understanding. Read. In the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations that are round about us, enslaving us and oppressing us. Read. We shall hear all these statutes. They're going to hear all the statutes. How are the nations going to hear the statutes of the Lord? Because we're going to be going out the streets to teach our people to repent. That's how the nations are going to hear these statutes. At the mouth of the holy prophets. On the street corners. Read. And say, surely this great nation. This great nation, come on. Is a wise and understanding people. That's what the nations will say. But for the nations to say that, guess what must happen? The Lord says he's going to set us in order before their eyes. The nation will watch. Will watch their demise. When we raise up is the, is the, is the demise of the nations. Understand that. When the nations see Israel wake up, guess what? It's death unto them. It's fear unto them because they know those nations, these people that we destroyed and oppressed and been slandering all over, guess what? They're waking up now. And there's nothing we can do but compliment them. What the Lord is doing unto them. Read again. Verse 6. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. Keep the four and do them. Uh -huh. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of the nation. In the sight, in the sight, in the sight. Meaning the nations will see it. The nations will see Israel waking up. The nation will see Israel repenting. The nation will see Israel putting on fringes, observing the Sabbath day, the feast of the dedication, repenting from their sins, not smoking no more, not jollering no more, not nyaupering no more. Read it. We shall hear all these statutes. They're going to hear all these statutes at the mouth of the holy prophets. Read. And say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Come on. For what nation is there so great? What nation is there so great above the number of the sand of the sea? Read. Who had God so nigh unto them? Because guess what? God is close unto us and the nations know it. Read. As the Lord our God is, is in all things that we call upon him for. You see that thing? Go ahead. And what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? Because guess what? The most said God only gave his laws to us. He didn't give the laws to the Chinese, Moab. He didn't give the laws to the Japanese, Ammon. He didn't give the laws to the white man, Edom. He didn't give the laws to the Arab man, Ishmael. He didn't give the laws to them. He only gave the laws to the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Which I set before you this day. You see that? Which I set before you this day. Go ahead. Only take heed to thyself. Only take heed to yourself, Israelites. The 12 tribes, the so-called black men. Read. And keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Uh -huh. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Because guess what? The reason why we find, our, we find ourselves in slavery. Because the laws of God had departed from our heart. Right? We don't know the laws of God no more. We don't keep God's commandments no more as a nation. Read. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. You see what the commandment is? The commandment says, teach the laws of God to your sons and your sons' sons. Your great-grandchildren too. Read. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror. You see that? He's telling us that he's commanding us that, listen, teach your children about how you got delivered out of Egypt. You understand? Because when we got delivered out of Egypt, we were in the wilderness and Moses went to Mount Horeb to get the laws, the commandments. Read. When the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together. Gather the people together. That's Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Right now, that's what we're doing. The same command that was given to Moses back then 
is given to us today in these last days. Gather the people together. How? Hit the streets. Go to the streets and wake up Israel and gather the people into this great house. Read. And I will make them hear my words. And I will make them to hear the word of God. Come on. That they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth. You see that thing? Because now as a nation, we have not learned to fear the Lord. But we've learned to fear the nations and their idols. Read. And that they may teach their children. That they may what? That they may teach their children. That they may teach their children these laws. That's why you see children here. Why? Because it's the laws of God to do so. Go ahead. And he came near and stood under the mountain. Read. And the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven. Read. With darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. That's when the Lord showed up. Come on. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Read. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard the voice. Because Israel tends to do what? Whenever they see something, they want to worship it. They want to create an idol out of it. He says, you only had a voice, and that's it. You understand? So let's go back. Go back to where was it now? Okay. Isaiah 126. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm going to restore thy judges as at the first. Read. And thy counselors as at the beginning. And your counselor as at the beginning. Come on. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. Read. The faithful city. The faithful city. Because when we return back to this book and do what it says, then the nations will say, surely this is a great, a wise, and understanding people. The nations don't say that right now. The nations don't say we are a wise and understanding people. They don't say we are what? We are a faithful city. We are the righteous. They don't say none of that. Instead, they speak evil of us, but not no more. The Lord is waking us up. Get Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy 16 verse 18. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18. Read. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. You see what he's saying? Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. The judges and officers, this is the leading body of the 12 tribes of Israel to teach the people the law, to return them back to this truth. Come on. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Because the Lord is the one that he will set up these men. Go ahead. Throughout thy tribes. Throughout thy tribes. Throughout thy tribes. Because we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Remember, we are God's army, brothers. We are God's army. Give me that in now, 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. We are God's army. We must understand that thing. And we are in a war. This war that we're in is not a physical war. It's a spiritual war. I keep repeating that word because it, means it needs to be spoken over and over so we understand the war we're in. Okay? Read what you got. 2 Timothy 2. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. Thou therefore endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We must endure hardness, brothers. It's going to be hard. Because anything that is worth, worth, that is worth it is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. This is not going to be a walk in the park. We're going to have to walk spiritually within and without. Read again. The second, the second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, guess what? You don't get yourself entangled in the affairs of this life. You don't get distracted by TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You don't get distracted by big booty women. By what? By tall, dark, and handsome. Because that's the, that's the thing that they set in the world, the standard for the sisters, right? Oh, no. The standard that you are set for is the standard that is in the spine. Understand it. Don't be choosing wrong. Read again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. Thou therefore in your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And a soldier is forged into war. A soldier is forged into war. Next verse. Come on. No man that warreth. No man that what? No, no man that warreth. No man that warreth. Because we are at war. We are at war, brothers and sisters. No man that warreth, come on. Entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. Don't get distracted by TikTok. 
You understand? TikTok was created by Moab to distract Israel. Read. That he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Because Christ is the one that we must please. He's the one that chose us to be soldiers in this truth. That's why. He's the one we must please always. You understand? Get that in Exodus 6 verse 26. We are God's army. You understand? And as God's army, we cannot be entangled with the affairs of this life. Okay? Watch this. Exodus 6 verse 26. Read that what you got. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 26. Read. These are the Aaron and Moses. Read. To whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt uh -huh. according to their army. According to their what? According to their army. Because we are God's army. We are God's army. And the war that we're in, guess what? Is a spiritual war. The Lord says He will set us in order before their eyes. That's what the Lord is doing right now. He's setting the black man in order in the spirit of Christ, you understand, before the eyes of the nation, in their sight while they watch. You understand? And there's nothing they can do about it. Read again, verse 26. Exodus chapter 6, verse 26. Read. These are the Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Read. Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies. According to their armies. According to their tribes. Give me Numbers chapter 1, verse 20. Numbers chapter 1, verse 20. I'm going to show you why the Lord says we are an army. Watch this. Because an army is made up of soldiers. But those soldiers must be good soldiers. A good soldier is about war. A good soldier is about his people. A good soldier is about deliverance and protection for his nation. That's what a good soldier is about. Okay? Numbers 1, verse 20. The book of Numbers chapter 1, verse 20. Watch this. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son. You know what? Before you get there, read Numbers 1, verse 2 and 3. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 1. Start of verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. Read. In the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Read. Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families. After their families. Read. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. So this is directed to the men here. Read. With the number of their names. Read. Every man by their poles. Come on. From 20 years old and upward. From 20 years old and upward. Come on. All that are able to go forth to war. All that are able to go forth to what? All that are able to go forth to war. To war. Israel. To war. To war. To war. In what? In Israel. In your nation. You only fight for your nation. You don't fight for the other nations. You fight for your... The only military that you join black men is God's military. Understand that? Read. Thou and Aaron shall number them by their army. You and Aaron shall number them by their what? By their army. By their ashes. By their army. By their armies. By their armies. You understand? Verse 20 now. Watch this. Now we're going to see the number of the children of Israel by their armies that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Read. The book of Numbers chapter 1 verse 20. Come on. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son. Reuben. Come on. By their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers. Read. According to the number of the names by their calls, every man from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war. This is the tribe of Reuben now. You understand? And Abi. An army of the tribe of Reuben. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Read. Of the children of Simeon, mm. by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of their names, by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war. You notice here, what the Most High God is doing, he is forging us into an army. At the hand of Moses and Aaron. That's what he's doing. You men need to understand the war that you're in. You need to understand why you're called into this too. To go forth to war in Israel for the deliverance of your people from captivity. You need to understand that. Verse 24. Come on. Of the children of Gad. Of the children of Gad. Read a troop. Read. By their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names. 
from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Verse 26. Now is Reuben, is Simeon, is Gad. Next verse, verse 26, come on. Verse 26. Uh -huh. Of the children of Judah. Of the children of Judah. Come on. By their generations. By their generations. After their families. Really? By the house of their fathers. According to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war. Verse 28, come on. Of the, verse 28. Of the children of Issachar. Of the children of Issachar. The so-called Mexicans of today, come on. By their generations. Right. After their families. By the house of their fathers. According to the number of their names. From 20 years old and upward. All that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war in Israel. To war in Israel. Verse 30, come on. Verse 30. Right. Of the children of Zebulun. Mm. By their generations. After their families. By the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. All that were able to go forth to war. You notice the most of God is about war. So when he's using Moses and Aaron to forge us into an army, it was for preparation for war. You understand? Because the 12 tribes of Israel, we are God's army. You understand? That's why the nations are afraid of us, brothers. The nations are afraid of us because we are God's army. You understand? That's why we must learn this Bible in and out to understand how to war. The Lord left these nations among us to learn how to war. To put us into a corner so that what? We, we what? We break. But the, how do we break? We return back to this book. That's how we prepare for that war, brothers. And it's a spiritual war. Back then it was a physical war because we had to go in and conquer the land of Canaan. Today is a spiritual war to deliver our people out of captivity. Spiritual captivity because our people are in bondage right now. Christ is going to deliver us physically right now. The leaders that the Lord is raising up, judges and officers, is to deliver us spiritually. Understand that. Read verse 32. Verse 32. Read. Of the children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 34. Verse 34. Of the children of Manasseh, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, Ray. from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 36. Watch this. Come on. Verse 36. Of the children of Benjamin, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 38. Watch this. Come on. Verse 38. Of the children of Dan, by their generations. Because Dan was swallowed among Benjamin. Go ahead. After their families, by the house of their fathers, According to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 40, come on. Verse 40. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 42. Verse 42. Of the children of Naphtali, throughout their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Verse 44. Verse 44. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered. You see that? The Moses and Aaron numbered the 12 tribes of Israel to force them into an army. Go ahead. And the princes of Israel. The princes of Israel, that's the captains. Come on. Being 12 men. Read. Each one was for the house of his father. Read. So were all, the, were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth for, to war in Israel. All that were able to go forth to war, to war in Israel. The reason why Moses was commanded and arrowed by the Mosai to force the 12 tribes of Israel into an army is so that we can go to war. Why? Because our nation we are under attack as a nation. We need to understand that. 
We are under attack. The attack is within and without. Read it again. Verse 40, verse 45. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 45. Read. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel, by the house of their fathers, Read. from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Now watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Because we need to understand, the Lord is forging us into an army. As he's forging us into an army, our job is to do what? Is to learn how to war. We must learn how to war. You understand? War before the war. What war is that? The spiritual war before the physical war, which is World War III. Revelation 7 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Come on. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Read. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The hundred and forty-four thousand men. These hundred and forty-four thousand chosen men that were able to go forth to war in Israel. This is the leading body of the 12 tribes of Israel. The leaders, you understand, the elect, those that the Lord has set and ordained from the beginning to deliver the 12 tribes of Israel from captivity. Read again verse 4. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. Come on. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Read. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Come on. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. All those that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Come on. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. All that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Come on. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Read. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Read. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Come on. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Read. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph. Of the tribe of what? Of the tribe of Joseph. Of the tribe of Joseph. Of the tribe of Joseph. Hold that. Give me that in Judges. Okay. Give me Judge George, Joshua, not Judges. Joshua. Chapter 14, verse 4. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Okay, give me Joshua 14, verse 4. Let's deal with the tribe of Joseph. What is that talking about? Read what you got. The book of Joshua, chapter 14, verse 4. Read. For the children of Joseph were two tribes. Well, the children of Joseph were two tribes. Come on. Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh and Ephraim. Come on. Therefore, they gave no part unto the Levites in the land same cities to dwell in Read. with their servants for their cattle and for their substance. Let's go back. Revelation 7 verse 8 again. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 8. Read. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Come on. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph is Ephraim and Manasseh. They were sealed 12,000. 12,000 of Manasseh, 12,000 of Ephraim. Come on. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Read. After this. That's it on that. That's it on that. This right here is the leading body of the 12 tribes of Israel. These are the leaders right here. Brothers, guess what? Your works will declare if you're part of the 144. You all want to be part of the 144. That's why we're all here. We want to be part of the elite of the 144,000. 12,000 from each tribe. Guess what? It's not going to happen when we sit on our lap and do nothing. We must go out there and war. But before we go out there to war, with, with, to war for the deliverance of our people, we must, deal, we must conquer the war within. The spiritual war within. You must overcome your personal trials and tribulation, your sins, the things you're struggling with, brothers. You understand? You must overcome that. You will not be able to teach your brother, don't commit adultery, but you are busy choking the chicken. There is no way your brother will repent. Impossible. You understand? Now watch this. Like I said, the war we in, brothers, is a spiritual warfare. Give me that in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is the war we in, brothers. This is the war we in. War before the war. Spiritual war. 
That's the war we're in right now before the main war, World War Three. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4. We watch it gone. The second book Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Watch this. Come on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Because as a soldier, as a soldier, as part of God's army, guess what? A soldier needs a weapon. Our weapon brothers, they are not carnal. We don't use guns. We don't use knives. We don't use none of that. We use the word of God. That's our weapon of war. Read it again, verse 4. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. Come on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Read. But mighty through God. The weapon of our warfare is mighty through God. Come on. To the pulling down of strongholds. The weapon of, of war that we use is to pull down the strongholds in the minds of our people. Because our people, they have strongholds in their minds. Christmas, Christianity, politics, religion, you understand? Democracy, 50-50, feminism, effeminization of the black man. You understand? That's the strongholds in the minds of our people. Nyaupe, abortion, teenage pregnancy, young girls having sex, young boys having sex. That's the strongholds in the minds of our people. Read the verse again, verse 4. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal. You understand? Read. But mighty through God. They are mighty through God. Come on. To the pulling down of strongholds. So what is the weapon of our warfare? Give me that in Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the weapon of our warfare, there is not carnal. The weapon of war that we use is not carnal. We, we don't use guns. We don't bend down crosses. We teach the word of God to our people. Our brothers and sisters, read what you got. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Come on. It's from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Read. For the word of God is quick and powerful. For the word of God is quick and powerful. That is the weapon of war that we use. The weapon of war that we use is the word of God. God's laws. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Come on. For the weapon of God is quick. And powerful. Read. And sharper than any two-edged sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Understand that, brothers. What you need to understand is this. The word of God is sharper than any sword on this earth. The word of God is sharper than any instrument on this planet earth. The word of God is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. The word of God is powerful than a nuclear weapon, than a nuclear warhead. It doesn't matter how many, how many weapons of war that Esau can, can create. They are not more powerful than this book. You understand? Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's how powerful the word of God is. It pierces through even the dividing asunder of your soul and your spirit. Read. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's how powerful the word of God is. The word of God is able to discern your intents of your heart. The intention that you have in your heart. The word of God can discern that. You understand? The word of God can discern. Listen, the word of God is so, is so quick, is so powerful, is so sharp. It's able to separate soul from your body. Because what joins your soul and your body together now in this captivity is sin. Sin is what glues your soul and your, and your soul and your body together. But guess what? What's supposed to bring your soul and your body together? The word of God. That's why it must divide between soul and spirit. It must get to the beginning. It must go in between. Guess what? It's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. You're going to get mad. You're going to throw tantrums. You're going to want to punch somebody in the face. But don't do that. Keep the commandments and live. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You're going to get offended when you get corrected. Guess what? It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You understand? That's how powerful it is. The word of God is clinical. The word of God is clinical. It will get in between. You understand? Understand that thing. That's the weapon that the Lord put in our hands. The Bible in the right hands is powerful more than a nuclear bomb. Understand that thing. And that's the weapon that God entrusted with us. So how can the Lord entrust us with such a great weapon? We're still busy playing games. We're busy, still in the midst of sin. 
We busy. We cannot come out of the sins we in. We busy still breaking God's commandments. How can the, the, this great weapon be in our hand? You're gonna shoot yourself in the face. You're gonna shoot somebody in the face with that. You have to sit down and learn this book and learn how to fight for your nation. Understand that. Go back to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Watch this. The second book, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not carnal. They are not physical. Like I said, this is not a physical fight. This is not a physical war. It's a spiritual warfare. Read. But mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. Read. Casting down imagination. The word of God is casting down imagination. Because you may imagine as a sister that wearing a legging is good. You may imagine as a brother that blonding your hair is good. You may imagine as a brother that sleeping around is good. You may imagine as a sister that not getting married but sleeping around is good. No, 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 no. The word of God is going to pull down the stronghold. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. This kind of Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Read. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Because the things that we imagine in our hearts, they are evil. They are destructive. Let me show you the things we imagine in our hearts. Mark 7, 21. You know, I like that verse right there. These are the things that we imagine in our hearts. You understand? And the word of God is going to cast that down. Mark 7, 21. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Read. For from within, out of the heart of men. For from within, out of the heart of men. Because that's, those, that's where imagination takes place. In the heart of men. In our minds. Read. Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. You see, evil thoughts come from our head. It comes from our spirit. It comes from our minds. Read. Adultery. Adultery. You see, these are things that we imagine in our hearts. That's why it says, it's going to what? Cast down imaginations, brothers. Because these are things that are playing in the black man's mind. Go ahead. Fornications. Fornications. Murders. Plural. Murders. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Evil sexual desires. And evil eyes. Hating your brother. Blasphemy. Blasphemies. Pride. Pride. Foolishness. Foolishness. These are things that we imagine in our hearts. Go ahead. All these evil things. All these evil things. The Lord is telling you, these, these things are evil. And guess what? They are in the mind. They are in our minds. On a day. Read. Come from within. They come from within the mind. And defile the man. And defile the man. The reason why you see as a people we defile as a nation is because of these evil things. These evil things that we imagine in our hearts. The word of God is going to cast these things down. Go back to where it was at. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Read. Right? Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. The imaginations. All these imaginations is the evil things that defile the man. Read. Right? And every high thing. And every high thing because adultery is the high thing that does what? That exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's the problem right there. You see, adultery, fornication, an evil eye, hatred, murders, thefts, these evil things that come with, from within and defile the man, they exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. That's what they do. That's why you keep doing them over and over and over. Because why? You have exalted those things above the word of God. Read. And bringing into captivity. Our job is to use the word of God to bring these evil things into captivity. Because these evil things, these are evil spirits that are plaguing our hearts, plaguing our minds. These are demons. Okay, come on. And bringing into captivity every thought. You see where these things are found? In your thoughts. These things are found in your mind. And they are defiling you. Read. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of the word of God in Christ. These evil things will not be able to survive if the word of God is present. Because the word of God is quick and is powerful and sharper than any two as sword. That's what you need to understand, brothers and sisters, too. Go ahead. And having, and having in a readiness to re revenge all disobedience. Stop right there. And having in a what? And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. You see what the Lord is saying? The Lord says,
Before you can go out there and cast down these evil imaginations in the minds of our people, these strongholds that are plaguing our people, guess what? It says you must have in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. Come on. When you what? And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. You see that part right there? When your obedience is fulfilled, that means what? The war, where does it start? It starts within you. The war starts within your own mind. That's where the war begins. You understand? War before the war. This is the war right here. You understand? This war that we're talking about right now, that we're in right now, is the war that is within you and the war that is without. Before you can go out there and revenge all disobedience, your obedience must be fulfilled first and foremost. You cannot go out there to teach your people to repent, but you're still in the midst of sin. That's hypocrisy. The Lord will not be able to use you to deliver your people out of captivity. Understand that thing. Read that verse again, verse 6. It's going to Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Come on. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. Read. When your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. Second Exodus chapter 14. Second Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. So in order for us to have in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, that means we ourselves must be ready to deal with the war within us. To deal with the demons within us. To deal with the plagues within us. We must have that readiness. You understand? Read. The second book of Ezra, chapter 4. Chapter 14, verse 13. The second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Read. Now therefore, set thine house in order. That's the first thing we must do. In order for you to revenge all disobedience in the minds of your people, you must set your own house in order first. Meaning what? You must do a cleaning exercise. You understand? Housekeeping. House cleaning and housekeeping. You understand? Go ahead. And reprove thy people. And then you can go out there and have a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your house is set in order first. Read. Comfort such as of them as being troubled. Because our people are in trouble. But before you can deliver your people out of trouble, you must deliver yourself out of trouble first. You must deliver yourself out of trouble that you have in the Lord. You have with the Lord. What is the trouble? Sin. The evil things that plague you on a day to day. You must have them under control with the word of God. Read. And now, renounce corruption. Then you can go out there and renounce corruption. Because our people, they are what? They are living corrupt lives. They are having a corrupt thought process. Your job is to remove the corruption with the word of God. Because all these evil things come from within and defile the man. You understand? So go back to where he was at. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. We need to understand. This war right here that we're talking about is a spiritual fight. That we must fight before we can go out there and confront the demons that are plaguing our people. Read. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 6. Come on. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. You see, he says you must have a readiness. You must have in yourself a readiness to what? To revenge all disobedience. To revenge all disobedience. Because the war that we're fighting right now, brothers, is, the, is war against all evil. We're waging war against all evil. That's why we hit the streets. You understand? We wage war against all evil, all deceit, all malice, all guile, all hypocrisy. We wage war against all evil. You think it's going to be a walk in the park? No. You think it's going to be easy? No. You think the nations are not going to are just going to step aside and let us deliver our people from captivity so we can rule over them? No. That's why we need the most of God behind us. The Lord will not be behind us, brothers and sisters. If we are not keeping God's commandments. That's the only way for that the most high God will hear our prayers. And that the Lord will go to war with us. Understand that. Okay. Read verse 6 again. The second book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Read. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. 
When your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. So that readiness right there. Let's deal with the readiness to do that. But the readiness to do that, guess what? The first thing is to do what? Is to make sure that your obedience is fulfilled. That's the war within. So we're going to deal with that. The war within you. Because it's easy to want to say, I'm ready to go to fight the war out there. But the war within you, you have not won it yet. You have not even begun to deal with the war within you. The way to win the war within you, to deal with it decisively, guess what? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Watch this. The second book of Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Read. Right. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. That's what the Lord is. That's the first point to deal with the war within you. Examine yourself. Don't examine the brother next to you. Mm -mm. Examine yourself. Read again verse 5. The second book of Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Read. Right. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Come on. Whether you be in the faith. Whether you be in the faith in Christ. Come on. Prove your own self. Prove your own selves. You prove your own self through self-examination. You understand? You prove your own life through examination in the Bible. You see whether your life is li lining up with the word of God. If your life is disagreeing with the word of God, it's time to sit down and examine. So you can be in line with the program of the Mosai. Read. Know ye not your own selves? Because everybody knows themselves. You know yourself. You know what you're dealing with. You know what your struggles are. You know what the demons you're struggling with is. You know the sin that you're indulging in on a daily basis. Only you know. You can lie to us and say, no, I'm not dealing with that. I'm not struggling with that. Everything is good. You be lying to yourself. You liar you. Read again. The second book of Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Read. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. Whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Prove your own selves. Come on. Know ye not your own self. Don't you know your own self? You all know yourselves. You know the secret sin that you're in? Go back to Psalms 19. Verse 11. Psalms 19 verse 11. This is what King David says here. Psalms 19 verse 11. Watch this. The book, the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 11. Read. Moreover, by them is moreover, by them is thy servant warned. By the laws of God is thy servant warned. Come on. And in keeping of them there is great reward. There's, in keeping of the commandments is great reward. Next verse. Come on. Who can understand his errors? Read. Cleanse thou me from secret fault. You see what David is saying? He says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Only you know what your secret sins are. That's why it says, know you not your own selves. Only you know what your secret errors are. You confess them before the Lord your God. Read. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Come on. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, right. and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions. You see that? So now, what we need to understand that the Lord, that's what the Apostle Paul says in the Spirit of Christ, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. No, you know, you know yourself better than I know you. You know, you know you better than your, that I know you. I know me better than you know me. You see that? That's what the Lord says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know you not your own self? You know yourself. You live with you every day. We don't. You understand? The secret sins that you're in, only you know them. You're the only one, you're the only one that can confess them before the Lord your God. You're the only one that can speak to the Lord and say, Father, help me to overcome this thing. You're the only one that can do that. We can pray for you that you confess your secret sins before the Lord your God. We can fast for you that you confess your secret sins before the Lord your God. But at the end of the day, you must do that thing. You must carry that bed. You must do it. You understand? So let's go back. You understand? Let's go back. Let's go back. The second book of Corinthians chapter 13 is five. Read. Right. Examine yourself. Examine yourselves. Come on. Whether you be in the faith, whether you be in the faith, read. Prove your 
own selves. Uh -huh. Know ye not your own selves? Know ye not your own selves? Come on. How that Jesus Christ is in you? Meaning the spirit of Christ is in you now. You to do what? To teach you right from wrong. Read. Except ye be reprobate. Except ye be void of judgment. What does that mean? Except you find yourself lukewarm. Except you find yourself asking, should I sin? Should I not sin? Should I lie? Should I not lie? Should I steal? Should I not steal? You should know, thou shalt not steal. That's it. You should know, thou shalt not bear false witness. That's it. You're not confused sitting there in the middle, questioning yourself whether you should break the laws of God or not. Except you be reprobate. You see that? Make sense? Yes, sir. Except you be reprobate. Only you know the Lord is saying. Watch this. Now, let's, get, let, let's, let's deal with this. You understand? How to fight the war within you. You self-examine, right? Give me Toby 12 verse 8. Toby, chapter 12 verse 8. Okay? This is not going to be a long class. Okay? Toby chapter 12 verse 8. But watch this. Read what you got. The book of Toby chapter 12 verse 8. Read. Prayer is good with fasting and arms. It says prayer is good with fasting, come on. And arms. And arms. And righteousness. And righteousness. A little with righteousness. A little with righteousness, come on. Is better. Is than, what? Is better. Is what? Is better. A little with righteousness, the law says, is better. Come on. Than much with unrighteousness. But than, than much with sin. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness, which is sin. Read. It is better to give arms than to lay up gold. It is better to give arms, whether it's arms in terms of funds, whether it's arms in terms of arms deed, is better. That is better than to lay up gold, because you can die living. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of what Toby, the forefather, is saying. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me Sarak. I'm going to show you what the Lord is saying. Sarak chapter 11, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 18. Come on. There is that works at rich by his work. By his wariness. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 18. Read. There is that works at rich by his wariness. And what? And pinching. And pinching. There is one that is what it says, they works rich. By their wariness and pinching, meaning what? They are willing to go through hell to get riches. Do you understand? Read. And this is the portion of his reward. And this is the portion of his reward. He's going to tell you the reward of this type of man right here. Next verse. Go ahead. Where did he say? Where did he say? This is what he says. Because he said, listen, I work hard, I work hard. This is my reward, right? Watch this. I have found rest. I have found rest. Now it's time for me to enjoy my riches. That I worked for so long and for so hard. Read. And now will I eat continually of my goods. He says, now will I eat continually of my goods. Because what? He is assuming that his riches will buy his life. He is assuming that the riches he's got will prolong his life. He's wrong. Read. And yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him. He doesn't know the time of the Lord that will come upon him when the Lord says, it's time for you to what? To go home. It's time for you to come home. Read. Meaning he doesn't know the day of his death. The Lord does. Read. And then he must leave those things to others. He must what? He must leave those things to others. He must leave those things to others. Those riches. Because he thought the riches will prolong his life. They will not. Now he's realizing that he's going to have to leave his riches to others. Come on. And die. And what? And die. You see that? That's, that's heavy right there. That's a painful discovery. You understand? That is a painful discovery, brothers. Go ahead. Be steadfast in thy, in thy covenant. Now the Lord is giving you the solution to this problem. He says, be steadfast in thy covenant. What is that covenant? Give me that in Psalm 78 verse 10. Be steadfast in thy covenant. Watch this. Psalm 78 verse 10. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 10. Read. The, 
They kept not the covenant of God. They kept not the covenant of God. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. We kept not the covenant of God, come on. And refused to walk in his law. And we refused to walk in God's laws. That's the covenant. You understand? So go back to Zerach now. Chapter 11 verse 20. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 verse 20. Read. Be steadfast in thy covenant. Be steadfast in thy covenant. Be steadfast in the laws of God. Refuse not to keep God's commandments. Go ahead. And be conversant therein. And be conversant therein. In what? In God's covenant, which is God's laws. Read. And works all in thy work. And works all in thy work. Don't works all in thy riches and realize that you're going to leave it to somebody after you drop dead. You see what the Lord is saying? So guess what? The thing that is guaranteed is the keeping of God's commandments. There's no side effects in keeping God's laws. But there's many side effects in waxing old by your riches and not knowing the day of your death. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. So let's go back. Go back to Tobit now. Chapter 12. Tobit 12 verse 8 again. The book of Tobit chapter 12 verse 8. Ray. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. Ray. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. Go ahead. It is better to give arms than to lay up gold. It is better to give arms than to lay up gold. Why? Because when you lay up gold, you are enriched through what? Through wariness and pinching. The day you die, you're going to leave it to somebody else to consume. Go ahead. For arms don't deliver from death. Because your arms deed will deliver you from death. Let's get some examples. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 36. He says, because arms deliver from death. No, Acts 9 verse 36. The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Come on. Now, there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha. Tabitha. So Tabitha was a certain disciple, a sister in the truth. Come on. Which by interpretation is called Dorcas. By interpretation means Dorcas. Come on. This woman was full of good works. This woman was full of good works. Come on. And Sisters, pay attention here. Come on. And arms deed. And arms deed. Come on. Which she did. Which she did. What are the good works that the arms did she did? Sisters, guess what? You need to have examples in this truth. You need to find out your righteous foremothers that did good works and follow after their footsteps. Kanyimba is not going to be an example to you. Peltusi will not be an example to you. Who's always twerking with big bums and she's got a child next to her. That's not a role model. That's a demon. Read again verse 36. In the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Read. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha. Read. Which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Read. This woman was full of good works. This woman was full of good works. So, Ukanyimbao, those are not good women to follow. You understand? Upeltusi, those are not good role models for you sisters to follow. But our foremother Tabitha in the Holy Scriptures, those are good examples to follow and to pattern yourself after. Come on. This woman was full of good works. She was full of good works. Read. And arms deeds which she did. Watch this. Come on. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick. Now, our foremother Tabitha, she fell sick. But she did the work. Read. And died. And she died. Now she died doing the work of the Lord. Now, watch this. Come on. Whom, when they heard, whom, they, when they heard, whom, when they heard, watch their, watch. Oh, 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 hold on. Read the verse again. Read it right. Verse 37 again. Read it slow. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 37. Read. And it came to pass in those days. That she was sick and died. She was sick and she died, our foremother. Come on. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. They washed her and they laid her in the upper chamber, in the second floor where they was. Read. And for as much as Lida was nigh to Joppa. So Lida is next to Joppa. Come on. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. So the disciples said that the apostle Peter was in Lydda, which is next to Joppa. Come on. They sent unto him two men, uh -huh. desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. That he must come with a quickness to them. Read. Then Peter arose and went with them. Read. When he, when he was come, 
They brought him into the upper chamber. They brought him into the upper chamber where our former the Tabitha was. Read. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas which made. So they were showing the garments and the coats that our former the Tabitha had made because she was a sewist. Mm? She did work in Israel. Understand that? She knew how to work the needle. Read. Which Dorcas made while she was with them. Which our former the Tabitha made was when she was with them. Come on. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. So the apostle Peter, she kneeled and prayed. Come on. And turning him to the to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. You see what they you see what the apostle Peter prayed for our former the Tabitha. The apostle Peter prayed for our former mother Tabitha because of the good work she did and because of the arms deed she did in Israel. Go ahead. And she opened her eyes. She over oh, oh, oh. It says, what did the apostle Peter say? But Peter put them forth and kneeled down and prayed. Read. And turning him to the body said, uh -huh. Tabitha arise. Tabitha arise because she was what? She was dead. Come on. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she said, up. You see that? She, the, after the apostle Peter brought our foremother back to life, she was delivered from death. That's what we read in Tobit. Because arms that deliver from death. You understand? Read. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Uh. And when he had called, and when he had called the saints and widows, Presented her alive. She, he presented our former mother Tabitha alive. Meaning our former mother Tabitha, she died and the apostle Peter brought her back to life. Go ahead. And it was known throughout all Joppa. And it was known throughout all Joppa. Come on. And many believed in the Lord. And many believed in the Lord. Come on. And it came to pass that he trapped, that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon and Turner. Simon and Turner. Now, what you want to notice here is arms, they do deliver from death. You understand? Why? Because the most said God used our former mother Tabitha to show her, listen, because you can't just sit there and say, mm, so me, I don't have anything to do. I just saw the garments. He saw the fringes. Shame on you. That's a great work. You must take pride in that thing. You understand? Because those arms, they do deliver from death. That's the same goal for you, brothers, too. Brothers editing videos and all that, you must take your job seriously. Brothers putting on you dealing with the social media stuff, take that job seriously because you are praising the most High God. Because what you're doing, those are arms deed which will deliver you from death. That's what you need to understand. Go back to Toby 12. Toby 12 verse 9. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 9. Come on. For arms don't deliver from death. Because arms, they do deliver from death. Come on. And shall purge away all sins. They will purge away all sins. Read. Those that exercise arms and righteousness. Those that exercise arms, meaning arms, deed, works in the body, and righteousness, keeping of the commandments, shall be filled with life. They're going to be filled with love, eternal life. Now, as part of fighting the war within you, you must self-examine. And as part of self-examination, you must do uh, you must have arms in the body. You must have works in the congregation. You cannot sit there and say, Me, I don't have anything to do. Shame on you. Why can't you say, What can I do? How can I help? Why aren't you saying that? He said, Nobody is approaching me. Don't nobody gonna approach you. Nobody gonna come to you and be what? And be patting you on the back. Because I see my daughter, she likes to say, Father, what can I do? What can I handmaid do? Why? Because she wants to do works. She wants to be given something to do. She's always asking the question. She don't want to sit idle. That's a good spirit. What can I do to help? She's five. It's time to wake up, brothers. Now I'm just telling you the reality of the situation. I'm not putting on a bed. No, no, it's true. It is true. Now read the Bible again. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 9. Read verse 8 for me. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 8. Read. Prayer is good with fasting. Prayer is good with fasting. So one thing you need to understand, brothers, 
is that prayer is good. Don't take prayer for granted. You understand? And I'm going to deal with these things in order. Prayer is good, come on. With fasting. With fasting. And arms. And arms. And righteousness. Stop right there. I'm going to deal with them backwards. Let's deal with righteousness. You understand? The Lord is giving us a blueprint on how to fight the war within you. You want to overcome your sins and all that? This is the thing that you must understand. Righteousness must be on the top of your list. Write that down. This is the list on how you're going to overcome your, the war within you. Righteousness. What is righteousness? Deuteronomy 6.25. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Okay, come on. I'm almost done. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Pray. Right. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments. If we observe to do all these commandments. Come on. Before the Lord our God. As he had commanded us. So righteousness is the keeping of God's commandments. That's the first step to fight the war within you. The keeping of God's laws. Righteousness. You must have works. Yes. But before you have the works. You must keep the righteousness of the Lord, which is God's commandments. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Luke 1 and 6. Luke 1, verse 6. Okay, come on. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. And they were both righteous before God. And they were both righteous before God. Come on. Walking in all the commandments of Walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. You see that? You see how you become blameless in the sight of the Lord? You walk in all the commandments of the Lord your God. That's the first step to fight the war within you. To deal with those evil things, those evil thoughts that proceed out of our evil thoughts, that defile us. Yes. To get rid of them, guess what? We must be blameless before the Most High God by keeping His commandments. That's what we all need to understand. Righteousness must be the top of your list. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Esther chapter 9. 2nd Esther 9. 2nd Esther chapter 9. Read verse 37. Watch this. The 7th book of Esther chapter 9 verse 37. Read. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. The law does not perish. The law perisheth not. The law perisheth not, meaning it endures forever. Read. But remaineth in his force. But remaineth in his force. The laws of God are in full effect. Do you understand? We need to understand that God's laws are in full effect. That's how we're going to fight the war within you. Because it remaineth in his force. Understand that thing. Now, go back to Tobit. Okay, 12. Tobit chapter 12. Read verse 8 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 8. Read. Prayer is good with fasting uh -huh. and arms Read. and righteousness. And righteousness. So righteousness, I'm starting with righteousness because why? That's number one. Give me, give me, give me Matthew 23, 23. Because Christ gave us, he gave us how to prioritize our issues. How to deal with the war, how to deal with the war within us. How to fight the war within us, the spiritual war within us. Matthew 23, 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23. Read. O unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read. Hypocrites. Come on. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, uh -huh. and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Stop right there. He says, you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. The weightier matters of the law is going to tell you what they are. Keep reading. Judgment. Judgment. You cannot make judgment without law. You can only make the judgments, the right judgments of God by keeping God's commandments. Read. Mercy. Mercy. Come on. And faith. And what? And faith. And what? And faith. Read. These ought ye to have done. These ought ye to have done. Come on. And not to leave the other undone. So Christ is telling you, guess what? Judgment, mercy, and what? And the law. You must do these things. Righteousness. This is very important. It's top of the list. You understand? Now, righteousness. Okay? I'm dealing with that. Righteousness. Let's deal with the next thing. Okay? This is how you fight the war within you. Let's deal with prayer. You must pray. Righteousness. You must have 
righteous works. You understand? Let's deal with prayer now. Prayer. You understand? Give me the book of Matthew chapter. Give me Luke 18. Luke chapter 18 and 1. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Read. That men ought to always pray. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to what? Ought always to pray and not faint. He says, men ought always to pray and not faint. See, prayer is very important, brothers and sisters. If to for you to fight the war within you, you must pray always and not faint. Because you have to be honest with yourself. Are you, are you fainting in your prayer life? Is your prayer life fainting? You understand? Is your prayer life coming to naught? You must revive your prayer life. You understand? Read the verse again, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Read. That men ought, ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to pray and not faint. That men ought always to pray and not faint. Don't faint when it comes to prayer life. Don't faint when it comes to your prayer life, brothers and sisters. Understand that. You understand? Give me that in Daniel. Okay? Daniel 6 verse 10. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. We must look at the examples our forefathers left behind for us. Read it. The book of Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Read. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. Come on. He went into his house. He went into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Come on. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Three times a day. That means Daniel has an, had an excellent prayer life. Daniel, or, or, Daniel always prayed. He never fainted. Because Daniel had an excellent prayer life. So this is the example of our forefather Daniel we can follow. Read and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did at what time. Because it was a custom of his that he did. He kneeled three times a day. He faced towards Jerusalem and prayed. You understand? As always, as aforetime. Guess what? You need to have a consistent prayer life. That, that's how you fight the war within you. Don't take advantage of prayer. Don't take it for don't take prayer for granted, brothers and sisters. Understand that. Give me that in Psalms chapter 55 verse 16. Psalms 55 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 55 verse 16. Pray. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Do you see that? As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Come on. Even and morning and at noon he says evening that's when the sun is down right and morning sunrise and at noon midday come on will i pray will i what will i pray come on and cry aloud and cry aloud meaning don't don't be praying he says no i'm praying on the inside that's not in the bible he says what will i pray and cry aloud that the lord will hear you read and he shall hear my voice and the lord will hear your voice Understand that. Don't be saying things like, no, I'm praying on the inside. That's evil as hell. That's not in the Bible. You understand? Get that in 2 Thessalonians. Okay? 2 Thessalonians, when it says, pray without ceasing. Okay? 2 Thessalonians, no, 1 Thessalonians 5.21. The first book of... No, no, verse 17, verse 17. The first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17. Go ahead. Pray without ceasing. He says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Give me that in Luke 14, 23. Because Christ also, he had an excellent prayer life. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. The book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. Go ahead. And when he had sent the multitudes away, when he sent the multitudes away, go ahead. He went up into a into a mountain apart to pray. He went. He, he did what? He says he went up and into a mountain apart, apart by himself to do what? To pray. To what? To pray. To pray. Come on. And when the evening was come, uh -huh. he was there alone. The same thing. He's following the same footsteps of his forefather David. He says, evening, morning, and at noon will I pray. 
Read again verse, 40, verse 23. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 23. Read. And when he had sent the multitudes away, uh -huh. he went up into a mountain apart to pray. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. Come on. And when the evening was come, Ray. he was there alone. He was there alone. What was he doing? He was praying. He was crying aloud and praying to the most high God this day. Understand that. Give me that in Luke 22 verse 31. Never take prayer for granted, brothers and sisters. That's how you fight the war within you. Okay. That's how you talk to the Lord. Luke 22, verse 31. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31. Read. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you. Satan had desired to have you. Come on. That he may sift you as wheat. That he may sift you as wheat. Because Satan wants to devour you. Read. But I have prayed for thee. But I did what? But I have prayed for thee. You see how important and powerful prayer was? Now, this is Christ speaking. He's telling the Apostle Peter, listen, Satan has, has a desire to, to, what? to destroy you. But guess what? I have prayed for you. The most powerful man on planet Earth during that time, he said, he didn't say, I'm going to call a legions of angels to come and defend you. He said, but I have prayed for you, Peter. I have prayed for you. Come on. That thy faith fail not. That your faith does not fail you when your trial comes. When Satan comes for you, I pray that your faith does not fail you. Because why? The Apostle Peter has to go through that trial. He has to go through it. That's how you fight the war within you. Come on. And when thou art converted. And when you have converted, when you have kept the commandment, read. Strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen your brethren with you. Strengthen the brothers that are around you. You understand? Meaning groom them. Teach them. That's what he's saying. Why? Because he said, I have prayed for you that your, your faith fail you not in the day when Satan will pay you a visit. You understand? Now, let's deal with fasting. Because, guess what? You must have righteousness. You must be blameless before the Lord. That's how you fight the war within you. And you must have, then you must have what? An excellent prayer life. Not only that, you must fast. Fasting, afflicting your soul. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 27. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 27. Watch this. Because the Apostle Paul, this is the Apostle Paul, okay? Talking to the church in Corinth. Watch what he says here. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 27. You know what? Start of verse 22. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Ray, 22. come on. Are they Hebrews? So am I. He says, are those Israelites in Corinth, are they Hebrews? So am I. Read. Are they Israelites? Are they Israelites? Come on. So am I. So am I. Come on. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So am I. Read. Are they ministers of Christ? Are they are they the ministers of Christ? Read. I speak as a fool. I might be a fool. That's what he's saying. I speak as a fool here. Go ahead. Being sarcastic. Come I on. Am more. I am more. Come on. In labors more abundant. Are in labors more abundant than they all. Come on. In stripes above many. In stripes, meaning the afflictions he carried. You understand? The persecution he endured. He says above measure. Come on. In prisons more frequent. In prisons more frequent. Come on. In deaths oft. In death oft. We've been through that. Prison not yet. But in death, yes, we've been through that. Come on. Of the Jews. Five times received I for the stripes, save one. Read. Thrice was I beaten with the rods. That we have experienced. You understand? When they threw bottles at us, when they stayed through stones on us, we were bleeding for days. Go ahead. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Come on. A night and a day. I have been in the deep. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. In Jennings often. In Jennings often. Guess what, brothers? We travel. We teach the gospel. Come on. In perils of waters. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of robbers. Come on. In perils, uh, in perils by my own countrymen. In perils by my own countrymen. Our own people that want to destroy us. Come on. In perils by the heathen. By the heathen. Read. In perils in the city. Uh -huh. In perils in the wilderness. Read. 
in perils in the sea, Pray. in perils amongst false brethren. That's it. I've been through there. They all left. All praise to the Lord. The Lord said, New spirits in. Come on. In weariness and painfulness. Uh -huh. In watchings often. In watchings often. Come on. In hunger and in, thirst. In hunger and thirst. Read. In fasting. In what? In fasting. In what? In fasting. Come on. Often. Often. In fastings, often. In fasting, so guess what? He fasted often. He had a consistent fasting life. That means the Apostle Paul is letting us know with all these trials that he's been through in hunger, in fastings, guess what? He says, I go through those things all often. You understand? It was a common thing I was going through. Guess what? We cannot, we are, as, as we are teaching the gospel of Christ, we're going to go through this also. That's why we fast often in this congregation. You understand? Why? Because we follow us at the footsteps of our forefathers to be able to fight and conquer the war within us. Before we can have any readiness to revenge all disobedience, we must deal with ourselves first. That's what the Lord is saying. We must deal with our own spirits first. Understand that? Give me the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 33. Luke chapter 5 verse 33. Let's get there. Watch this. The book of Luke chapter 5 verse 33. Ray. And they said unto him. They, 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 this is the scribes and Pharisees in verse 30. Read verse 30 so we get it. The book of Luke chapter 5 verse 30. Come on. But, but they are scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples. Saying, Ray, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Jump down to verse 33. Verse 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often? Why do the disciples of John fast often? The scribes and Pharisees, they are murmuring against him and against John. He says, Why are the disciples of John, they fast often? Come on. And make prayers. And they make prayers. They fast and they pray. Read. And likewise, which means, which means the disciples of John, they had a consistent prayer and fasting life. Because it says they fast often. They make prayers. Read. And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees. And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees. Come on. But thine eat and drink. But your disciples, Christ, they eat and drink. How come they don't fast and pray? Watch what Christ says here. Come on. And he said unto them. Read. Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast? Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast? Listen. Because we were with Christ right there. There was no need to fast. You understand? Read. While the bridegroom is with them. While the bridegroom was with us. There was no need for us to do that. Go ahead. But the days will come. But the day will come. Come on. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. When the bridegroom. When the what? When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Read. And then shall they fast in those days. And then shall they fast in those days. Christ is no more on this earth. Guess what we're doing now, brothers? We're fasting in these last days. You see what you see how this works? Because when we when we walk with him back in the day, <laughs> mm, you understand what I'm saying? When we walked with him back in the day, there was no need for us to do this. But now we're doing it because why? It's time for us to do it. You see that? Yes, it's time for us to fast in these last days now. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 17 verse 20. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. We must fast often, brothers and sisters, to fight the war within us. Because that war right there is the war before the war that's coming upon this earth. World War Three. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20. Pray. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Read. Because of what? Lack of faith. Read. For verily I say unto you. Come on. If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed. If you have a faith as a grain of mustard seed. Mustard seed is a very small seed. It's the smallest. Come on. You shall say unto this mountain. You shall say unto this mountain. The mountain represents the war within you. The mountain represents the problem you're dealing with. The mountain represents 
the demons you're struggling with and you want to overcome. Read. Remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove. And it shall remove. Meaning that war within you, it shall be overcome by what? You fasting. Come on. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing will be impossible unto us. Come on. How be it? However, come on. This kind were not out there. This, this type of problems, this type of demons you're dealing with, they do what? Go ahead, not out They're by, not going to leave your spirit. Come on. Go ahead, not out by prayer. No, no, no. Go ahead, not out, but. Go ahead, not out, but by prayer and fasting. They're not going to go out. They're not going to leave you. You're not going to overcome them or not conquer them except you fast and pray. You're not going to be able to overcome. There are certain things you will not be able to overcome except you fast and pray. That's what Christ is saying. That's what it says. Then shall they fast in those days. Now, 2 Esther chapter 5 is 20. Watch this. 2 Esther chapter 5 is 20. The second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 20. Great. And so I fasted seven days. I saw I what? I fasted seven days. This is Ezra. He says, so I fasted seven days. Come on. Morning and weeping. Morning and weeping for all Israel. Read. Like as Uriel the angel commanded me. Watch this. Come on. And after seven days, so it was. So after seven days he fasted. Read. That the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. Come on. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. You see what happens when you fast? Your soul recovers the spirit of understanding of this Bible. Your soul recovers the spirit of understanding. So what is that letting you know? When Christ, what we read, Christ said, This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. That means if you don't fast also, as part of fighting the war within you, your soul will not recover the spirit of understanding. Why? Because you've got demons in your head, in your spirit, that are plaguing you, that are weighing your spirit down. Therefore, you cannot recover the spirit of understanding. Come on. And I began to talk with the Most High. And I began to talk with the Most High again. So when we fast, our spirit, our soul recovers the spirit of understanding and we begin to talk with the Lord. The Lord meaning what? The Lord begins to deal with us. So he, Christ is giving us the, the solutions here to fight the war within you. When you feel that your spirit is not, is not hot as it used to, guess what? Fast. Pray. Keep God's commandments. You understand? Now, let's deal. Let's deal with the next point on how to fight the war within you. Faith. You must have faith, of course. You understand? You must have faith. But before we get there, watch this. Give me, go back to Tobit, okay? Go back to Tobit 12. Read verse 8 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, verse 8. Watch this. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. You see that? It says prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. Now, give me Tobit. Tobit chapter 4. Arms. Tobit chapter 4. Read verse... Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, Tobit chapter 4. Read verse 16. The book of Tobit chapter 4 verse 16. Come on. Give up thy bread to the hungry. Give up thy bread to the hungry. The bread is talking about the word of God. Meaning teach your people. Read. And of thy garments to them that are naked. The garments to them that are naked is the, the garment is the word of God. To clothe your people with the garment of righteousness. Read. And according to thine abundance, give alms. He says, according to your abundance, how the Lord has blessed you, give alms. Read. And let not thine eye be envious when thou givest alms. And don't let your eye be envious when thou givest alms. Meaning, stop complaining when you give alms. Read. Pour out thy bread on the burial. Pour out thy bread on the burial of the just. Uh huh. But give nothing to the wicked. Don't give anything to the wicked of our people that don't hate that hate this truth. Go ahead. As counsel of all that are wise. As counsel of all that are wise. Come on. And despise not any counsel that is profitable. Don't despise any counsel that is profitable. Why? You must give arms. Not only that, 
but don't despise counsel that is profitable unto you. Watch this. Let's deal with what? Let's deal with faith. You must have faith in the Lord. Give me second Exodus 9 to 7. You must have faith. You know what? Before we get there, before we let's deal with application. One is righteousness. Two is prayer. Three is fasting. Four is the application of God's laws. You must apply God's commandments. Give me Proverbs 2 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. I'm almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. The book Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Read. My son, if thou will receive my words. If thou will receive my words, come on. And hide my commandments within thee. And hide my commandments with thee, come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. You must incline your ear to wisdom. You must give your ear to the wisdom of the Lord. Come on. And apply thine heart. And do what? And apply thine heart. And do what? And apply thine heart. You must apply yourself to the laws of God. You must apply. Yes, you must pray. Yes, you must fast. You understand? Yes, you must give alms. But you must apply yourself to the laws of God. Read. And apply thine heart to understand. It. And you must apply your heart to understand. Sirach 6 verse 32. You must apply. The key to success is application. Sirach chapter 6 verse 32. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 32. Read. And, and strength. No, no. Sirach 6 verse 32. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 32. Read. My son, if thou, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. If thou wilt, Thou shalt be taught the laws of God. Come on. And if thou will apply thy mind. If thou will apply your mind. You must apply your mind to the laws of God. You cannot hear and not do. You must hear and do. Come on. Thou shalt be prudent. You're going to be wise. Read. If thou love to hear. If thou love to hear the laws of God. Come on. Thou shalt receive understanding. You're going to receive understanding of this Bible. Come on. And if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. If you bow your ear to the laws of God, you're going to be prudent or wise. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. You must apply yourself to the laws of God. Application is the key to success in this truth. Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do, that do, that apply his commandments. Come on. His praise endureth forever. Oh, praise is. Sarag 19, verse 20. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 20. Come on. The fear of the Lord is, the, is all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Come on. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. In all wisdom is the what of the law? Is the performance of the law. Is the performance of the law. Is the application of the laws of God. That's how you get wisdom. You understand? Read. And the knowledge of his omnipotence. And the knowledge of his omnipotency. Now let's deal with faith. Okay? Second Esther 9 verse 7. Second Esther 9 verse 7. Yes, you must apply God's commandments. Guess what? But you must have faith. You must have faith. Faith is not is part of the equation. Don't put only faith out of this. You understand? Read. Second Esther 9 verse 7. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Come on. And everyone that shall be saved. And everyone that shall be saved from captivity when the Lord returns. And shall be able to escape. And by, shall be able to escape. To escape. Read. By his works. By his what? By his works. By his works. That's your arms. That's your righteousness. That's your application. That's your fastings. That's your prayer. All of these things that I mentioned. Guess what? They fall under the works. By his works. Come on. And by faith. And by what? And by faith. And by faith. So you've got, you've got arms that you do. You've got fastings that you do. You've got prayers that you do. 
You've got, uh, what's the other one? Prayer, fasting, arms. What else? Righteousness. Application, righteousness, which is false under what? Works, works, works. And what? And, and by faith. And by faith. You must have faith. Go ahead. Whereby ye have believed. Whereby ye have believed in the Lord. Hebrews 11 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. These are the tools on how to fight and overcome the war within you. Hebrews 11 verse 14. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. Is that what I want? No, Hebrews 11 verse... Verse... Wait, wait, wait. What verse did I write? Hold on a second. Yeah, Hebrews 11 verse 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Come on. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. You see that? Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So it doesn't mean that you must not have faith. You must have faith. It doesn't mean you, 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 you not only, you, you mustn't just have faith only. You must have faith and works. The works translates into what? Prayer, fasting, arms, and righteousness. You understand? Read again, verse 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Come on. But without faith it is impossible to please. It is impossible to please the Lord. Come on. For he that for he that cometh to God must believe that he You must believe that he is the son of God. Come on. You For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Romans 10 verse 17. Romans 10, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. Come on. So then, faith came by... Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. You're not going to have faith when you are listening to Caribbean all day. You're not going to have faith by listening to Tupac all day. You're not going to have faith by watching TikTok all day. But read that verse again, verse 17. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Come on. So then, faith, faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Because what you must be hearing is the word of God. You understand? Matthew 17 verse 17. The book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 17. Listen to what Christ says here to his disciples. Come on. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, come on, how long shall I be with you? Read that verse again, verse 17 again, one more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 17. Read. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, O faithless and perverse generation, O faithless and perverse generation, because faith was one of the biggest problems the apostles had. They had no faith. Come on. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I be walking with you, teaching you all this? Come on. How long shall I suffer you? How long shall I suffer you? Come on. Bring him hither to me. Bring the child hither to me. And Christ rebuked the devil out of the child. They couldn't do it. Why? Because they had no faith. That's why Christ says, it is impossible to please him. Give me that in Luke 17 verse 5. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 5. Come on. And the apostles said unto the Lord. The apostles said unto the Lord. Now listen what they are saying. They're getting their minds right. What did they say? Increase our faith. What did he say? Increase our faith. This is what they asked of the Lord. Lord, increase our faith. Because we are faithless and perverse generation. That's why they asked the Lord to do that thing. Read. And the Lord said, if ye had faith... As a grain of mustard seed. Because Christ was also letting us know that our faith is going to be small in these last days. That's why he's comparing our faith to a grain of mustard seed. Read. You might say unto this sycamore tree. You might say unto this sycamore sycamore tree. Sycamore tree, come on. Be thou plucked up by the root. Be thou plucked up out of the root, come on. And be thou planted in the seed. Uh huh. And it should obey you. So be this sacrament tree is the is what is an example of a problem the brother or sister has. 
The second mind tree is an example of a problem you have. The war within you that you must overcome. He says, it shall obey you. What is he saying? The sin that is overpowering you, on that day, when you make that decision, that sin will obey you. Instead of you obeying it, it shall obey you. You're going to fight the war within you and you will win. You will overcome. That's what he's saying right there. You might understand that? Yes, All praise to the Most High. Sisters, did you understand that? Yes, All praise to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, that's the end of the class this day. All praise to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Yes. All, praise. All praise to the Most High. God, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.